The guy knocks on the door, begging for help and hoping that someone is inside the house and will open the door for him. But the door never opens. They assumed there was no one there. The girl was outraged, because some sick guy is knocking on her door again and three whole months have passed. There are always at least two or three absurd situations happening in life. A perfect example is that this world is a novel. Despite the fact that her transformation did not bother her in any way, she quickly got used to the new world. She completely stopped paying attention to her previous life. But recently changes have begun in her life, but life has become not so easy. The girl noticed that the guys were not going to leave from under her door. The heroine remembered a conversation with her neighbor Andrew. He was just asking where she had been and added whether she was going on a business trip. All this really bothered her. She replied that she was traveling precisely for this reason. The neighbor asked what kind of person it was. The girl replied that it was already the sixth person, and she had just returned. It all started when someone just fell right in front of her house two years ago. It was a girl unknown to her, but the heroine helped her by providing first aid. The girl came to her senses. It was as if she wasn't sick at all. People began to spread rumors like the heroine was a healer, and sick people literally began to fall under her house so that the girl could cure them. Fortunately, after the girl's self-isolation, there were much fewer visitors. But this whole story with the healer did not work in the heroine's favor because she is a jeweler by profession. And because of gossip, there were much fewer clients. Syrinx's store is located in the western part of the city of Crixus, which is the largest city in the empire. The city itself is divided into five districts. The heroine is in the first. There are many gambling games and various auction markets in the area. Syrinx works illegally as a jeweler and makes good money from his business in this gambling area. Andrew wonders why Syrinx doesn't change her profession to a healer, because that way she could earn much more. But the girl shouted at her neighbor asking how she could treat people without a license. She will face the death penalty for treating people without a license. There are special powers in this world such as magic, alchemy, divine power, and spirits. People who heal others are called healers, and Syrinx is one of them. People who have a gift go to register in the temple. But in order to treat people, you must have a license, because treating people without it is illegal. Those who do not follow the laws and break the rules will suffer the punishment that the temple will give, namely a dog named Marquis Forsetti. The standard punishment is the cutting off of one or two limbs, and then the head of some. The girl would never give up working as a jeweler, because she enjoys this occupation immensely, especially since it brings her profit. Andrew pointed his finger at the guy sitting at the door of the house and added that apparently the guy was waiting for her help. Syrinx understood that she had no choice, but she needed to take care of the guy. Andrew was delighted and said that the heroine was great and would help the poor. Suddenly, the neighbor remembered his work and instantly left the girl at the door of her house. The guy sitting on the ground stood up and approached Syrinx, asking if she was the owner of the house and introducing himself as No Name. People who do not want to disclose their own name on the street introduce themselves as nouns. Syrinx didn't understand why he used the nickname, but she replied that she was the owner of the house. The boy replied that in this case, he would leave a respected person in her responsibility. The girl did not like this statement. If a random passerby heard it, he would think that she provides completely different services. She wanted to ask who this man was, because everyone she treated was respected persons but the guy left here. The girl asked where and why No Name was running away, but then heard his apology. Instantly, there was no trace of the unknown person. He left an unknown guy on the girl. The girl was furious. Why should she even take care of the unknown as a patient? This is not a shelter. Approaching the patient, she saw a torn shirt, and on the naked body, there was a deep cut stretching from the left sternum to the shoulder. The guy was pretty injured. Syrinx had no idea how she could carry the guy into the middle of the house. The neighbor also ran away only after hearing about some problems. The heroine was wondering what happened to the guy because the wound was very deep and serious. But when she saw the face of the wounded young man, she was afraid because he was incredibly handsome. This beautiful golden hair color suited him very well. Suddenly, she recognized him. It was Heimdall Vespergo. He is the son of the Aspergo family, which used to be known for its power, but at one point this family lost everything. The wounded man is one of the main characters of the novel, in the world of which Syrix lives, and he is also an antagonist. Heimdall woke up and wanted to say something, after which he reached out to the heroine's hand. The girl got scared and asked what he allowed himself to do. This novel was quite unusual. 
In the first and second parts of the novel, the main characters are different, and the genre of the first part was different from the second. The first part told about the beautiful main character who had her own huge harem, but after that, very quickly and unexpectedly, the girl got into a brawl and died just as abruptly. And in the second part of the novel, the main character becomes the cousin of the previous main character. And this part tells about how much the cousin misses her dead sister. Heimdall Vespergo was the only man who did not have any relationship with the heroine of the second part of the novel. He didn't want love or physical contact from her. On the contrary, everything he longed for was the death of the girl and hated her. The hatred of both families for each other continued not even for years, but for entire generations. The main character's parents kidnapped Heimdall's brothers in order to avenge their ancestors, and it all ultimately ended with one of the brothers being killed. And Heimdall himself was sold to the slave market, where he was bought back. Little Heimdall has his life ruined so much that he will grow up to become the complete embodiment of evil and revenge. And his goal, of course, is the main character of the second part of the novel, Frey. This persistent and very intelligent man tortured Freya without any mercy, but his hand never wavered while torturing the girl. That's why he's the main antagonist. And right now, the main antagonist of the novel lies in front of Syrinx. He had a strange expression on his face with an evil smile. He looked like he would kill someone in a moment. Judging by what is told about him in the novel Syrinx, there is no point in at least somehow intersecting with this guy. But the girl was worried about the question of why he came to her. Syrinx shouted into the darkness, addressing the no-name. She said she remembered well what his face looked like. Apparently the man who abandoned Heimdall is his mentor. At least that's what the heroine thought. The girl could not take her eyes off the wounded man. He was terribly handsome. The girl thought that he could be one of the five feudal lords who rule this area. Syrinx understands that she is not in the best situation, because Heimdall and his mentor are a walking problem, because they know not very good people. It's not for nothing that the wounded man is the main antagonist. This was not the first time that the girl was distracted by the beautiful beauty of the young man. This confused her. Syrinx decided to leave the wounded man on the street, covering him with a warm blanket, because it was better not to cross paths with people like him at night. She called him a handsome thief and went home. The girl provided the necessary first aid, and in the morning she will figure out what to do with him next. The next day... The girl and Andrew barely dragged the wounded man into the house. Syrinx is surprised, because for the first time she sees someone stronger than the merchant. Andrew, as always, was on his own wavelength, and while the girl was examining the wounds, he asked her about why she didn't just marry the one she cured, because everyone she saved were very influential people. But the neighbor did not take into account one fact, namely that all these people were women namely, the chairman of the Assassin's Guild, an evil merchant, an aristocrat who kidnapped people from the auction hall, a knight who turned a blind eye to the crimes, and a ghostly black witch. Here's everyone she came across, and unfortunately they all like handsome men. Andrew continued to talk about his own, and said that they should be grateful that the girl saved their lives. Syrinx replied that it was better not to tell anyone about this at all, otherwise their life would not last long. The neighbor laughed alarmingly and almost choked on his sandwich. Andrew added that the girl finally had a chance, because for the first time she had a male patient. Therefore, let him not relax, but act. He noticed the strange expression on Syrinx's face and asked what was wrong with her. The guy called her again and once again distracted her from the wounded man. As soon as the girl turned around and asked what else, Andrew added that she should be careful because it was still a man. Don't interfere, even when you're worried about someone. This is their unspoken rule, because it is unknown who and when can kill you. Syrinx replied that she would comply with this and thanked her, after which the neighbor went about his business. The girl began to figure out how to treat the wounded man, but in order to properly treat the wounds, he needed to be undressed. The girl was worried about various thoughts that he would kill her for undressing him. The guy felt bad, he woke up, the girl offered him her glasses. He sat up on the bed and put them on. Heimdall simply blinded Syrinx with all his beauty and asked who she was and what he was doing here. She was very worried and replied that he lost consciousness yesterday near her house, so she saved him. After that, the guy took the girl by the shoulders and nervously began to ask if he had done anything strange the previous night. But Syrinx replied that she herself was very tortured, so she left him on the street. 
she apologized because she simply physically would not have been able to drag the guy home on her own. She added that Heimdall is squeezing her shoulders too much so it hurts her a little. The man apologized and added that he simply had not fully come to his senses. He said that he gets very strange at night and apologized again. Syrinx apologized and asked whether to treat the guy further. She added that she provided the first necessary aid, but the wound cannot be left in this state because it will get infected and become infected. The guy agreed with the treatment. The girl asked Heimdall to undress. The guy showed with all his appearance that he had no intention of taking off his shirt. But Syrinx said that in this case she would not be able to cure him. The heroine saw that the guy was listening carefully to her every word. Above all, he has great looks and a good character, like the typical protagonist that he is. Seeing the naked body, the girl enjoyed it. He was very aesthetic. Readers gave him a nickname for a reason, because during the day he behaves sweetly and good-naturedly, like an innocent lamb, and at night, like a ruthless wolf. In this regard, he is nicknamed Jekyll and Hyde. In other words, the guy has a split personality. And the reason Searynx didn't want to cross paths with the guy at night was because she didn't want to get involved with the guy's dark side, and it only appears at night. The personalities within the body are so different that even the crystals in the eyes change color. The girl asked if she could take a closer look. Heimdall raised his hands up and waited for the girl to fully examine him. Syrinx could not help but appreciate the remarkable figure of the wounded man. She could no longer restrain herself and wanted to touch the guy. Suddenly, he interrupted her pleasure and asked if she was standing too close to him. But Syrinx quickly replied that this is the absolute norm for the doctor and the patient. The wounded man apologized and added that for a moment, not entirely good thoughts ran through his head, but the heroine would prefer to hear them from a guy who looked so attractive to her. Blue eyes are the color of a jewel, and the eyes are filled with something unknown, like the sea. A guy who restrained himself and was embarrassed, this is a description of his image from the novel. Such a beautiful and innocent personality attracts people towards her. But at night, a completely different person wakes up, and all that innocence disappears without a trace. Syrinx asked if she could touch Heimdall. The guy was terribly embarrassed, and his cheeks became crimson red from such a question. But the girl replied that she could heal people only because of the touch, and she wanted to inform about this in advance. The guy blushed even more because he did not understand the doctor's intentions. He began to apologize and wanted to hide his face behind his hand. The guy added that he was simply not used to communicating with the opposite sex and continued to draw the wrong conclusions. Syrinx reassured the guy and added that everything was fine. She told Heimdall that she would have to be patient for a while. The girl added that the guy should try not to cry because she noticed that he had a whiny character. The boy asked not to laugh at him and agreed. The girl put the stone to her abs and was able to at least taste it a little by touch. She liked the feeling, and instantly the whole room was filled with boundless radiance, and the stone itself in Syrinx's hands began to shine with a golden color. Exactly a moment later, as soon as the glow disappeared, the guy saw that the wounds had healed. He asked a logical question to the girl, Is she a healer? To which Syrinx replied that no, because she was doing it illegally, and that's why she asked me not to tell anyone about this. The wounds were very deep, and it took the girl a lot of mana to restore the guy to good condition. Syrinx added that she would face the death penalty for illegal treatment, and she doesn't really want to die in agony. But there is also punishment for those who receive treatment illegally. Their tongues are cut out. Therefore, I advise the guy to keep his mouth shut. Heimdall asked if she was talking about the altar of discipline. He said that he knew about the harsh punishments and did not intend to tell anyone about it. For Setai under any circumstances. Having eliminated these nuances, the healer asked the wounded man to turn around so that she could examine his back. The ability to heal people is just as important as in the previous world, and the altar of discipline is the most powerful temple in this world. He is a group of priests fighting against violations of the rules, and the main one in this clan is the family of the Marquis Forsetti. The head of the family is Paladin Yuvan Forsetti. He is the hero of the Empire, and here is Yuvan himself, Forsetti is obsessed with the main character from the first part, and after her death, the favor spread to the main character from the second part. Freya's healing skills also contributed to this. After her cousin's death, Frey received powerful healing powers, and the healing power attracted the attention of men towards the girl. But Syrinx is not very happy with this power, 
she heals people by extracting magic from gems. Therefore, her treatment methods are very rare, and if she is caught, the temple will definitely give her a harsh sentence. The healer informed Heimdall that all procedures were completed. She was glad that she was in a place where the temple would have difficulty finding her. In the meantime, no one comes for her. She can do it before. Syrinx asked if anything else was bothering the guy. Her patient replied that everything was fine, thanks to her, and began to smile widely. He wanted to say something else. Then the girl sharply opened the door of the house and showed the guy to the exit, at the same time saying goodbye to him. But the guy didn't want to go just like that. He wanted to thank her. But the healer added that this was not necessary. The young man wanted to at least say goodbye, but she pushed him out the door and said that it would work best here, after which she said goodbye and closed the door. Syrinx breathed a sigh of relief, finally having no more worries. Well, at least that's what she thought. But a few days later, she met Heimdall again, but unfortunately, it was in the dead of night. He looked at her and greeted her with an evil smile. The girl was returning again from an incredibly difficult business trip. The damned nobles didn't want to listen to her at all. Suddenly, in the darkness, someone shouted the healer's name. It was Torsha. He knew that the girl had recently earned some money. Previously, he wanted to deceive Syrinx. But he didn't succeed. And since then, he has been eager to take revenge on her. First of all, he is the head of the Assassin's Guild called Blessings of Darkness. Torch asked how a girl could make such a face in front of a man. He was disgusted by it. Syrinx did not change in her face. Rather, more notes of disgust towards her husband appeared. She asked if he was still tired of coming to her, and she no longer wanted to leave her home. But the man did not want to go anywhere. He knew that the Syrinx guard would not be there on that day, because today was Friday in the middle of the month. Therefore, the knight will not patrol the area today, but will sit at the bar. The girl felt funny at Torch's words because she didn't even think of counting on her guard. She added that she just thought the man was just a brainless freak, neither from the eyes nor from the shoulders. He looks just terrible. The man answered only one thing, that bitches like Syrinx speak better only when the beautiful faces of such girls are painted. But the healer had nothing to do with such threats. She replied that she did not succumb to such provocations. Suddenly she noticed that the man, in addition to being scary, was even lower than her by a head, and she added that apparently Torch's brain is as small as his height. The man could not stand such insults directed at himself and reached out to hit the girl. A moment before the impact, his hand stopped and Torcha grabbed it. Heimdall asked what was happening in the middle of the night. He had a smug smile on his face. Syrinx was shocked what the guy was doing in this exact place was not clear to her. Torch asked the man who he was and attacked with a knife. But the young man gracefully avoided the blow by tripping him and snatching the knife from the thief's hands. Heimdall added that the night thief should not know who he was and launched the knife, hitting him right between his fingers. And so Heimdall switched to the girl. He greeted her and said that Syrinx knew perfectly well why he came to this alley. And if the healer tells how everything happened, he will have mercy on her and will not kill her. The heroine instantly saw the difference between Heimdall at night and the day. His eye crystals were already of a completely different color, red, signifying danger. Such a guy's eyes were completely unknown to her. It was as if another person was really standing in front of her. The girl's thoughts were interrupted by Heimdall himself. He repeated himself and said that if Syrinx wants to be unharmed, she better act as he says, and God forbid the girl lies about something. Suddenly, he added that he felt something strange, as if he was sure that the girl knew him, but he could not remember her. Torshi sneakily threw a knife at Heimdall's back, but the man reacted in time and successfully repelled the attack. Torsha, who could barely stand on his feet, added that he was not going to endure humiliation and shouted that he would not forgive such a syrinx. A lot of problems fell on the girl in an instant, constant business trips, and now the head of the bandits, and before that together the knight Heimdall, the girl was upset and scared. Syrinx answered Torcha that it was a man who hit him, not her, but the enraged bandit replied that the girl was a witchback and brought the guy to beat him. The girl did not understand the logical connection between all this, and the bandit added that she would still regret that she had hooked a member of the Blessing of Darkness gang. But the heroine stood her ground. She added that even if the bandit asked her to touch him, she would never do this in her life. Torch asked in surprise why and did not understand what was happening, and Syrinx pointed her finger at him and said that she would never have touched him because he was a freak. 
the girl could not stop and continued to insult the bandit, saying that she was an esthete, and that she likes handsome men, because appearance is a reflection of character. Therefore, Syrinx will never choose Torsha. She added that the bandit can leave. Torcha could no longer tolerate this, but the healer could no longer be stopped. She said that the bandit's people were talking about him the same way. After all, his nature and face, absolutely everything about him is disgusting. The bandit wanted to take revenge on her at least once and asked his subordinate to let him go. But he replied that it would be dawn soon, so he needed to leave. And Syrinx added that they should quickly leave while they still can. Otherwise, they will get it well. The crazy bandit shouted at her that he would paint her face and take revenge for all those insulting words that came from her lips in his direction. But the girl only answered so that Torcha could at least live until that moment. Returning her gaze to the knight Heimdall, the girl saw his smile. The guy complimented her, saying that she was quite cold-blooded. He came closer and added that there was no one around them except darkness. Even if someone heard the scream, they would hardly interfere in this matter. Heimdall pulled out a knife. He was more interested in finding out what kind of relationship Syrinx had with that bandit. The healer said with a smile that during the first meeting with Torsha, he wanted to rob the girl. The guy quickly understood everything and added that most likely the bandit did not succeed. Syrinx answered, in short, that's exactly how it was. Heimdall brought the blade of the knife to the girl's chin and gave the order from that moment to respond in the same way. He was wondering why the girl constantly avoided answering, because he wanted to find out all the information. The healer asked what exactly he wanted to know. Heimdall directly asked how she knew him, because he sees few people and lives in hiding. The guy ordered to go into the house and talk, adding that the conversation would be long. The man directly asked if the girl saved him, to which he heard the same direct answer that yes. Syrinx was worried, because she minded her own business and saved him whether he would be angry with her because of this. Everyone has always been careless when it comes to being a healer, and Heimdall is no exception. As soon as they entered the house, he immediately tied her up. Hearing the answer, the man realized that the wounds healed so quickly because of Syrinx's guilt. The healer replied that this is usually called help, not guilt. But Heimdall was one of those who liked to get hurt. This man made Heimdall an ideal thief, but because of this, he lost all his wealth and power and began to live in poverty. Syrinx thought that the man's mentor did all this and was generally surprised at how he survived after such wounds. The girl asked if Heimdall could now solve it because she had answered all the questions, should she be released, and added that she might not even thank her for the treatment. The guy liked Syrinx's behavior. It was difficult to confuse him because even in such a situation, she behaved completely calmly. But the girl replied that this is the absolute norm for this area. Robbery, kidnapping, hooliganism, and extortion of money are commonplace for everyone living in this area. The healer asked to untie her hands. But Heimdall was more interested. He asked the girl why she was so calm, and whether this confidence was related to the fact that she would remain alive. Heimdall said that he woke up a few days ago and there was a piece of paper on his desk with an address unknown to him, and he is a very curious person. Searing saw that regardless of whether it is a daytime or nighttime character, he thinks equally well, but during the day he does not do unnecessary things because he is not completely confident in his actions. Heimdall's personalities do not remember each other's memories, and the night version of him is generally obsessed with finding out what happened while he was sleeping. And this is bad for Searing. She had just arrived from a business trip and most likely the daytime Heimdall wanted to thank her for her help. But due to the fact that he could not find her for several days, he did not do this, leaving a piece of paper with her address on the table. The girl didn't understand why the night version of the guy wanted to come to her, but apparently, that he is very interested in her. But why exactly she interested him, the girl does not understand. He also doesn't understand what this whole performance is for. Heimdall raised his sleeve and said that the girl was apparently an illegal healer, but without hesitation, he cut a vein on his bare arm. Asking her to cure it, the young man wanted to see evidence of Syrinx's words, but the girl did not understand why he needed this. The girl warned that her services were expensive. At the same moment, the guy asked why she decided to help someone like him for free before. Syrinx replied that he behaved differently then. Heimdall asked if his daytime version had said anything interesting. The girl replied that during the day he said that he behaves amazingly at night. The man replied that it was true. 
Although the girl knows how to heal people, she didn't like to look at blood. She soon healed Heimdall's wound. He was surprised. There was no wound. He wondered how she did it. But the girl did not answer the question, but asked to let her go and leave herself. Heimdall quickly approached Syrinx's face and apologized for his behavior, adding that she is the first girl who behaves so calmly in a difficult situation when she is so often threatened. Syrinx calmly replied that everything happens for the first time. Heimdall agreed and added that it was the first time because he simply killed others. He asked the healer's opinion on this. The girl replied that if the young man wanted to kill her, he would have done it right away. After all, he doesn't look like someone who hesitates for a long time over the question of whether to kill someone or not, and the girl also suggested that most likely he likes to take victims by surprise. Syrinx, during her answer, quietly untied the rope on her hands and struck it with her hands filled with magic. Heimdall fell to the ground and was amazed. He quickly pulled the knife out of the case, but she gracefully intercepted it, adding that now everything would be the other way around. The girl asked if the young man was surprised, but she was not going to apologize because he behaved too arrogantly. She asked if he really thought that everything would be so easy with her, and she added that now the guy cannot move until she allows him to. Heimdall was shocked. He wondered what she had done to him. Searing said that she really heals people, but besides that, she knows several spells that can help her be safe. After all, an illegal healer needs an ace up her sleeve, but she couldn't use the spell on others because it only works on the opposite sex. She added that it was good that he was a man. She hopes he doesn't hold a grudge against her because of this, because she did to him the same way he did to her. The guy asked what she would do with him now. Syrinx replied that some animals destroy the ecosystem, but she will let him go. But he will do it during the day. But Heimdall asked what would happen next because he could come to her again. Siri NX calmly replied that she could extend her spell for a month, and joked that she saw that the man was not even against it. Heimdall said that he would not forget this to her, but she calmly replied that he was not the first person to do this to her. The man added that he was selfish, and it was better for the girl to hope that her magic worked. Syrinx calmly replied that she was confident in her magic because she still wanted to live. Heimdall asked what the spell sounded like. The girl answered Cientata what it means to sit. She wished good night to the guy and called him a doggy. Finally, the heroine's soul felt lighter. The next morning, the daytime Heimdall was shocked, and the question in his head was how he ended up in Syrinx's house again. The satisfied girl calmly approached him and gave him his glasses. The guy was worried whether he had done anything bad that night. The girl didn't even know what to say to him, and suddenly she came up with an idea. But she replied that at night the young man harassed her. The man sat down on his knees and began to burst into tears. Syrinx was in shock. The guy was crying, and there was nothing left of the cruel and ruthless bandit. The healer noticed that Heimdall's face was beautiful even when he was crying. The guy shouted that he would take full responsibility upon himself. The girl wondered how exactly Heimdall would take responsibility for this. The boy was ready to marry Syrinx. Such confidence surprised her, but made her laugh a little. The girl added that this need not be done, but the man said if he harassed her, then he should marry her. Then the healer admitted that it was all a joke. Syrinx was surprised how such different personalities united in one body. Heimdall asked why the girl tied him up in this case. Syrinx replied that the guy threatened her. The man got scared and asked if he had hurt the girl. The healer replied that the guy did not hurt, but was with a knife. And if the girl did not have the appropriate skills, she would hardly have been able to remain unharmed. After all, she falls into the category of people who need to be very careful in the alley, namely, old people, girls and children should not be here, especially at night. But they don't leave the dangerous area because being in it is quite profitable. The girl just wanted to show that everyone can spin. The guy looked at Syrinx and suddenly apologized and asked for help. Heimdall began to repent, saying that he knew that he was an unscrupulous person, but he begged to help him. For this help, he is ready to do anything. The young man apologized for this, because only recently he received help from her, and now he asks again. Syrinx covered the man's face with her palm and asked him to calm down. It was strange for her to see the guy so confused, but she couldn't just trust him either. The healer said that she was ready to listen to the new moon, but tried not to interfere in the affairs of those whom she treated, and she added that the mother does not have anything in common with Heimdall. The boy asked to listen to him. He said that at night he was not himself. He didn't know how to explain it all, 
but he doesn't live in the body alone, and he and this face don't know each other's memories. Although the girl knew about this, she pretended to be surprised, because she wanted to hear the version of the daytime personality. Heimdall said he could neither describe what was happening at night, nor stop it. Syrinx asked if this was connected with that day when the young man lay covered in blood, and he confirmed everything. The girl said that someone brought him to her door, after which he lost consciousness. The healer asked if the guy asked to be brought to her, and if he knew this person. Heimdall replied that he knew, because most likely he was a trusted person. The guy almost said the name of this person, but the girl stopped him because she didn't need more baggage problems. Suddenly, the young man asked a somewhat personal question, whether she really didn't like him that much, but Syrinx did not understand what he meant. Heimdall added that the girl had previously said that she didn't want to get involved with him at all, and whether his appearance was really so repulsive. The guy was sad to hear this. He didn't think that everything was so bad, but added that he was not as bad as the healer thought. After these words, the guy's cheeks turned very red. The girl did not understand why he blushed so much. She wondered what he was thinking. Heimdall stood up and asked if he could ask for help again when he was seriously injured so that the healer would heal him. He was ready to pay at any cost. Syrianex covered the guy's lips with her fingers and ordered him to choose statements, especially in this alley. After all, they may ask for something unexpectedly special. The guy didn't know what was happening. He was so embarrassed that his body temperature rose by half a degree. The girl asked how you can say that he will do everything that is asked of him. The healer said that she didn't even know what to ask. She offered to repay the debt with her body. But the guy awkwardly asked why the girl didn't ask him to do some other thing, where, for example, physical strength was needed. The girl replied that a lot of bad things were happening in this area. She thought about herself that he could be sold into slavery in the 5th District, and they are unlikely to behave as well with him as she does. Having been a victim of the slave trade as a child, he simply will not forgive such an area, so most likely he will simply burn it down and completely destroy it. Therefore, it is quite possible that this area will not exist in three years thanks to Heimdall. The girl switched gears and said that it was all a joke, and she would continue to treat him. In fact, Syrinx has her own special purpose, and that is to find a special gem. And the more important characters, the better for the healer. After all, all the attention will be on them, and the girl will be more difficult to notice. Heimdall is just right for this job. The young man was very grateful. It seemed to him that the girl didn't really want to treat people. The healer saw potential in the guy. She believes that soon Heimdall himself will discover the ability to heal, and she will help him for a while. Syrinx replied that she simply didn't like to see people covered in blood getting into her. The fact that Syrinx heals the guy several times will not change the plot of the novel at all, and he will subsequently completely forget the good things that she once did to him. Another terrible event awaits him, which will completely change him and make him the main thief. The man sincerely thanked, but Syrinx replied that this could not be done, because this was not free help. The guy didn't think that it would all be free, so he asked what the girl wanted. Heimdall said that he was not stupid, and he had an attractive appearance. In addition, he is an excellent cook and has a huge amount of money. But you can't take a girl with money because she has plenty of it herself, and beauty doesn't interest her. The services of a cook are also not important to her, because she buys food at a nearby store, especially since Andrew cooks deliciously. She finds it hard to believe that this man will be the main antagonist in the novel, but the guy managed to offer something that would be beneficial to the girl, namely accounting. He pointed to the huge amount of paper and said that in the middle of the calculations, there had been a mistake made during the multiplication. The guy said that it should be 9,097, and gave advice that such calculations are easier to do vertically than horizontally. Syrinx was surprised by the guy's skills. He added that he had good eyesight, although this sounded absurd, because he wore glasses. The girl went to look at the calculation where the mistake was made. The guy came up and asked if the healer was interested in, and was following market trends. Syrinx didn't understand how the guy understood this, so she asked him about it. Heimdall replied that he understood this from the calculation system, but drew attention to some disorganized things. And it can help with this. The healer didn't even think that in her calculation system everything was so bad. But on the other hand, there is nothing surprising about such disorder. The girl really wasn't strong in calculations. She realized that the guy was ready to work as her secretary and accountant. The healer looked at him seriously. Heimdall assured that he would work very conscientiously and efficiently, 
he asked to believe in him. Syrinx finally got her first patient, but there was one problem. What to do with the night version of the young man? After all, the girl didn't want the guy to come back with stab wounds after every night. The man calmly replied that he could simply be turned off, for example, with a frying pan on the head, adding that it would be advisable to hit him with the edge of the frying pan. The girl was surprised by such a careless attitude towards her body, because this is the body of the daytime version. Syrinx agreed, but will only treat the guy during the day. The guy happily agreed and promised that he would try not to cause any harm to the healer. One night she saw the same picture, the mutilated body of a guy lying at night right in her clearing. Sarcastically, she asked the night Heimdall why no one took her puppy to her. The guy said that the healer had better stop talking to him in such a sarcastic tone. But she didn't care. The girl said that the daytime version of the guy allowed him, if anything, to be turned off using a frying pan. Of course, the girl did not want to hit Heimdall on the head. She had a spell that she could use if something happened. She asked the night one whether he even understood in what state he arrived. Syrinx began to teach the young man. His lifestyle was wrong, because there were many stab wounds and burns on his body. It was a miracle for her that he came to her while still conscious. Heimdall said that at such moments it is better to speak after a battle than after a beating, because he did not say that he was beaten. Syrinx replied that she came to this conclusion because now he looks more like a stray dog. She added that absolutely everyone, seeing his wound, would come to the conclusion that the young man had been beaten. But Heimdall stood his ground, and people usually ask him where he was wounded, because he doesn't look like someone who can just be beaten. The girl wanted to say something about the daytime, but the guy interrupted her and said that the daytime can only guess what he does at night. Heimdall looked her in the eyes and asked sternly what she knew about him. Syrinx began to lecture him, because she saved him the previous time, and only thanks to her he is now alive. The person who survived, thanks to him, has no right to talk to him like that. He asked if the guy was ashamed of his behavior. She added that he shouldn't look at her as if she were to blame him for something, because in such a situation even a bow would not be enough. After what she did to him at night, he never thanked him. She added that she knew people like him very well. The healer said that people like him are ready to team up with a serial maniac just to achieve their goal, and, if necessary, even kill their own parents with a knife in the back. Searing said that, of course, this was normal for his lifestyle, but he should not hate her. Heimdall wanted to object, but the girl closed his mouth and added that in any case he would not harm her, because she was treating him. The girl asked if Heimdall still had plans to kill the healer. He didn't answer. She pretended that the guy was just terribly pissing her off, but in fact she was pretending it to teach him a lesson. It won't matter because he won't look for her after he learns to heal himself. She asked if he still looked at her angrily, but the guy really doesn't feel that bad. But this does not negate the fact that he needs to be cured as soon as possible, because he will not die, but may remain crippled. His hand especially needs immediate treatment. She quickly took the rope and tied the guy. She added that she knew how to tie animals. Heimdall only replied that if the girl wants to die quickly, then let her do the same. Syrinx was playing with a guy. She asked if he really still wanted to kill her. And she began to tell me that if the guy swung his fist at her, she would start screaming loudly in fear. Next, she asked what would happen if she accidentally drowned him in the river, looking at the knot that she had tied. The healer added that with such a knot, he would definitely not get out of the river. Knight Heimdall added that at this rate, it turns out that even he is kinder than her. But the girl said that she had already seen the kindness of the guy and how he moved the sharp end of the knife at her throat. The guy leaned over to Syrinx and said that he saw fear in her eyes. The healer only joked about it, asking if the guy was a pervert because he liked girls who were afraid. Ultimately, the guy gave up. Heimdall asked how long this would last, but Syrinx replied that the treatment with precious stones is long and painful, and it also takes some time. The girl added that if he politely endures the pain, she will give him a piece of candy in the shape of a bone. Syrinx began the process of stone treatment. She is surprised that the guy is so careless with his body. She added that at one point it simply will not withstand such loads. Knight asked if she knew this from experience. The girl did not answer this and asked him to raise his head. Heimdall resisted and asked why she needed this. The healer herself raised his head and replied that his neck needed to be healed. He added that the neck hurts the most. Syrinx had no idea how he could withstand all this pain. She wondered how long he had been tortured for him to develop such endurance to the point of pain.
The guy asked why she was helping him, since she herself lived well. The heroine replied that there are two types of people in this area, the victim and the thief. Oddly enough, two types of these people suffer from feelings of guilt. Heimdall noticed that the girl did not feel guilty. He asked if this was sympathy for him. The wounded man said that it was visible on her face and asked if she or anyone close to her had gone through something similar. But Syrinx replied that she was not obliged to answer any of his questions. The guy added that he most likely has a good understanding of people's emotions. The healer said that Heimdall can understand people's emotions after healing. She completed the process and said that she was going home. Opening the door, she looked at the guy. She felt sorry for leaving him on the street in this condition. Moreover, it is the end of winter and it is quite cold outside. Treatment only heals the wounds, but nothing cancels out the fatigue and strain on the survivor's body. Standing on the stairs, the girl gave Heimdall a choice. Either he would sleep tied up in the yard, or he would promise her something and sleep in the house. He had to promise that he wouldn't hurt her. Suddenly after that, she said that Heimdall could forget about it, and headed into the house. But the guy with an evil smile said that he promised not to harm the girl and to be in the house. He asked to name all the conditions that she wanted. Syrinx said that it is not good to be rude to your savior, but in fact there are no special conditions. But the guy refused to believe it. The healer replied that there was no need to judge others by oneself and said that she would now tell him something. The girl began to list that firstly, she had experienced a lot. Secondly, her father hit her younger brother in the eye, after which she cannot calmly look at people's wounds and injuries. She said everything she wanted. Heimdall listened to her so he can come home. But before that, let him swear before the precious stone. He didn't understand why he should do this. But the girl stood her ground and ordered them to repeat after her. But he says, from now on, I will become a good person. But the guy refused to say this nonsense. But after the girl's glance, he repeated the words and said her name. The girl allowed the guy to come into the house. Heimdall asked what would happen if he broke his oath. Syrinx replied that nothing bad would happen. She would just imprison him in chains. But if he sticks to his word, he won't have any problems. She showed the guy to the sofa and said that he could lie down on it. Heimdall asked if she would not be sad. He wanted to stay with her. But Syrinx told the guy to stop talking nonsense and go to rest. He asked if the girl would climb the mountain. She replied that she was not a busy person and money would not earn itself. An unknown guest came to the jewelry store. This was her favorite customer. She greeted him kindly, but asked where he had been because he had been gone for a long time. The healer wanted to know how she could help. The unknown man said that the girl greeted him as warmly as always. Syrinx asked if anything would change, because her kindness and loyalty, as well as the quality of the precious stones, had not changed at all. This was her steel rule. The husband handed over the bag of stones, but his hands were shaking. The girl asked if she could pay in gold. The husband agreed and asked to do it quickly. Erinx is surprised that a good client does not always bring good things. But that day he behaved strangely. The girl gave him gold, and the man advised the girl to be careful. She asked to support him, but he did not spin and simply walked towards the exit. The girl reacted to this with surprise. She thought that the authorities of the neighboring organization had changed. The lady wants to check it out the next day. Heimdall asked that this was an unusual guest because he was covered in sweat. Syrinx said that the guest was acting strange today. The guy said that people always act like this when they see something as terrible as this. And he asked what happened to the girl's face. The healer was surprised what exactly happened to her face. Heimdall replied that she behaves completely differently with clients. She smiles sincerely towards them and speaks sweetly. Syrinx asked if the guy wanted the same attitude towards him. After inspecting the goods, the girl found a small diamond and added that this day there was a really good product. The healer had a feeling in her soul as if there was a Bengal cat in her house. Such cats are a combination of a wild animal and a domestic pet. The boy asked what Syrinx was doing. She replied that she was examining precious stones, but he wanted to know more about her profession and whether she wanted to make her own product. The girl laughed and asked why he was interested in this. But did the guy really have an interest in her? Heimdall laughed and asked how she knew this. But he added that Syrinx thinks about him, because he is quite handsome and his face is worth a lot of money, or how a girl feels about his body. The guy unfastened the fasteners on his shirt and partially exposed his abs and chest. 
The girl asked not to distract her because she needed to finish her work before the morning. Heimdall said that Syrinx would be a very reliable person in the family. The healer joked that in this case, Heimdall would be an unemployed man. But the guy replied that he would be just a butcher who kills people. The jeweler found a very clean stone among others. It can be sold at a huge price. The girl is happy to have found a valuable stone. The gift of identifying a precious stone was passed on to her through a family connection, but it has been with her since childhood. Thanks to this skill, a girl's life can be filled with many interesting situations and places. The young man asked if there was something precious, but the girl was focused on work and replied that it was difficult to do. Suddenly, Heimdall stood up abruptly. Syrinx was scared because she was completely focused on her work. He went to the bag and pulled out a knife from it. He added that the man told the girl to be careful because the house would soon be surrounded. The most expensive thing was a gem that everyone in the empire wants to get. Outside, the house was surrounded by knights, and they had no intention of leaving. They came precisely for this stone. He is very valuable to one family in a very high position. This official is a count who has excellent connections with the emperor's family. It was for this reason that the knights cordoned off the house. The situation awaiting them was not simple. The girl quickly collected the stones in a bag and tied it. She said that Heimdall was in the same trap as she was, and if they caught her, they would take him too. Syrinx took the guy by the hand and pulled him along. The young man resisted and wanted to know where she was taking him. The healer said that if the guy doesn't want to be caught by the knights, they need to run away. But if Heimdall wants, she can leave him in the house. The guy replied that it was a good idea to leave, but he was wondering where exactly. The healer advised the guy not to show his face in front of the knights and go with her through the secret door. The guy thought that after this they would run away, but no. A secret door leads to another house. Her neighbor Andrew joyfully greeted her and realized that the girl, as always, was in trouble. The neighbor quickly gave the healer a bag, and she threw him a coin and asked him to count himself. She couldn't stay long and had to leave now. Andrew said he would treat her next time, but the girl looked very serious. The guy noticed this and hoped that everything would be fine with her because it would be sad to lose such a good neighbor. The girl simply asked me to wish her good luck, as always. Andrew wished the girl good luck and added that he hoped everything was going well with her. Everything will be fine. Otherwise, it will be sad if such a good neighbor like her disappears. In parting, the girl added that if they killed her, it would be Torsha. She asked them to spit the hatchling in her face. The neighbor asked if all this was connected with the business trip she recently went on, because he was worried. His clients simply disappear one after another. Andrew gave advice, even though he didn't know if it would be effective. The guy said that if a girl wants to leave the first area unnoticed, she needs to walk all the time in the direction of 8 o'clock and not turn anywhere. Heimdall followed her, although the healer believed that he would leave her as soon as they left the bar. The guy wanted to hear at least some explanation. He said that he was not against escaping. Taking Syrinx by the hand, he asked why they should run, and shouldn't he know that? The guy said that he would not let the girl go until his curiosity was satisfied. The healer explained that, as she said earlier, this was a stolen item. Heimdall asked if this was a reason to escape, because he was sure that an illegal immigrant like Syrinx was already accustomed to this. But in this case, this is part of someone's plan, because the knights surrounded the house for a reason, but this does not seem to be any coincidence. Moreover, such a rare stone cannot just fall into the hands of an illegal immigrant. It was definitely a trap. This gem was called the Tears of Aslot. It is the finest gem in the empire and has a history of 120 years. And eight years ago, the emperor gave this jewel to his younger sister when she married Count Amanti. This stone became the family heirloom of Countess Amantha. Therefore, there is not a person in the empire who does not know about this stone. And just recently, Count Amanti announced that the family heirloom had disappeared. And by order of the count, the search for this jewel continues. The count ordered the knights to look for the stone on the illegal market. That's why they walk in their area all the time. Moreover, the supplier behaved very strangely, as if he was afraid of something. And he's not the type who would do that to her. Heimdall said that most likely someone wants to set her up. Syrinx agreed and said that most likely these are people who want to get rid of her. That's why they could plant the jewel. She thought it was the Blessing of Darkness Guild, led by Torsha. The healer added that these were most likely those whom Heimdall beat up last time. But the guy had no idea who she was talking about, because lately he had managed to cripple many people. But Syrinx replied that she did not want to know about who the young man beat and about his adventures.
The guy interrupted her and asked if it was the guy who looked like a catfish. The girl replied that she was talking about him. It seems to her that this behavior suits him quite well. His people could have planted the stolen item in the girl's bag. Heimdall said that the girl had done a fair amount of punishment for torture if he decided to act so radically. The healer completely agreed with the guy. He concluded that in the market even clients can cheat. At that moment Syrinx remembered, but asked why Heimdall did not leave her. The young man calmly replied that one of the knights saw him as they were leaving the store, and Heimdall himself realized that in such a state he himself would not get far. In addition, he realized that the girl had a safe town, but she could take him there. He added that as his healer, she was responsible for him. Syrinx replied that she had never provided services to anyone after treatment, and that he was the worst patient she had ever encountered. The young man took this as a compliment. The girl noticed that due to the guy's poor health, he became a little kinder. After that, the healer took Heimdall by the shirt and tilted him towards her, reminding him that in one way or another he should not forget that the girl was helping him. She agreed to show him a safe place and told him to follow her, but if the guy loses consciousness, she won't carry him. Heimdall replied that it was very nice of her. He asked where exactly they were going. She called him Puppy. The healer replied that they were heading to the second district, because there was something placed in each of the districts. And when in their area there are small shops, then in the second, on the contrary, there are huge shops, especially on the first street. The girl was not sure whether they would escape persecution thanks to Andrew's advice. In one of the alleys, they saw people from the Blessing of Darkness. The gangs were ordered to remove the pair. They all looked at each other. The girl threw the gem into the crowd and it instantly exploded. At that moment, Heimdall, like a wild animal, gracefully and without hesitation dealt with each of the thieves. The guy emphasized to Syrinx that if she did not take responsibility for him, problems would await her. The healer replied that she understood everything. The girl began to count how many precious stones she had left. After all, the main drawback of her skill was that she needed to spend gems on each spell. Moreover, she should not waste jewelry on attacks, but she should be more careful in the future. The girl pointed to the end of the street and said that the second district was located in this place. Although in this area there are also robberies and harassment, this happens less so the young man can relax. Although not everything is safe here, there are places that Cyrix trusts. They ran, but Heimdall's breathing became ragged. The young man asked if the healer was monitoring his health. She replied that she was not watching, but was just observing. And although she feels responsible for the seriously ill patient, at the moment they need to go instead of rest. Heimdall became interested since the girl watched his breathing and joked, or whether she was not interested in something else about him. The girl was glad to hear that the guy still had enough strength, because he was still joking. Although the healer cured the wounds and damage, the body still felt the shock of the rapid healing by magic. And the body needs time to recover. Syrinx noticed the guy's gaze. It was like a pervert's. The girl thought that Heimdall was thinking about something stupid. The guy asked what would happen if this was true. But the girl threatened that no one had canceled the rope yet. So let the guy keep his thoughts to himself and be quiet. Heimdall said that the healer was a very unpredictable girl and asked if he could pay off his debt in parts. The girl said that she does not provide installment plans, and now the guy can only thank her. Syrinx turned the young man's gaze away from her to the front and said that it was not easy for her now, so he should look forward. Finally, they came to the house they needed. But it looked more like a castle than a house, and its dimensions were so stocky that it was impossible to imagine such a thing. Heimdall assessed the house, calling it quite good. The healer replied that it was made in the style of the owner, a man met them at the door and said hello. The young man appreciated the unusual atmosphere of the house, but as Syrinx said, it was all necessary. After all, from the very beginning, you need to make the guest afraid. Thus, the client will feel pressure on himself. They were informed that they were expected at the reception, the feudal lord of the second district, and the richest man in the region. This is the girl she cured. Syrinx bowed low and said that she was glad to see the lord of gold. Beautiful, red-haired girl named Lintella Dulcines reciprocated and said that she had not seen the baby in her castle for a long time. The couple sat down on the sofa and Lintella asked why Syrinx was looking for her. The owner of the gold had an interesting habit. She did not continue speaking until she had taken two puffs. People who have reached incredible heights always have a strange habit that is difficult for everyone to understand. 
Syrian X added that most likely the girl already knows the reason, because Lintella is one of those people who learn about everything very quickly, thanks to her own information network. After all, many of her clients are informants. The owner of the gold replied that she really knew everything. But she was interested in where Syrinx got such a beautiful lover. She called him a rare product of high quality. And although Lintella intended to take the guy into her hands, Syrinx showed that Heimdall was hers and only hers. The guy grabbed the girl by the hand and said that, unfortunately, he had already sold out. The healer showed the gem and asked if the mistress knew what it was, and she was silent, still saying that she did not know. Syrinx decided to tell everything from beginning to end, but how she was set up by planting this precious stone. Lintelli found all this very interesting, but she was bothered by the fact that someone dared to offend a person who was under the protection of the feudal lord of the second region. Syrinx knew that this lady was doing dirty things and not everyone could get close to her. And even saving such a person was an incredible morality. The healer asked to get rid of the stone and provide her with protection. Lintella asked if this is all the girl wants. Syrinx replied that this was her request, and when the owner of the gold fulfills it, they will be even. The woman said it was difficult. But suddenly the jeweler added one more condition. She wanted more such precious stones. Lintelli was surprised by the girl's impudence, but she agreed and asked what stones Syrinx wanted to receive. The healer said that she needed black pearls and a black diamond. Lintella replied that Syrinx is an excellent specialist in her field, but she does not want to lose her savior, so she agrees. The girl understood that she could not do without Lintella's help, because she would both protect her and help her take revenge. Syrinx began to tell that every month the Imperial Auction House offers tons of precious stones, and the most valuable award is the crown of Princess Rosatia. It is incredibly expensive. And the winner was Henders Tenpa, who is Lintella's right-hand man. In other words, she was the winner. And although Syrinx is sure that the price for such a stone was simply exorbitant, but the stone won at auction is just a good fake. Lintella replied that this was a very serious statement, but Syrinx was ready for anything and did not refuse, but would rather give up her whole life at once in case she made a mistake. The owner of the gold asked me to bring something. Soon Syrinx had a scroll in front of her, proof of the truth. Magic immediately detects a lie, and if a person lies, her heart will immediately burst along with the paper. After seven years of using this scroll, its sale was prohibited, but it could still be obtained. Looking at the crown, the girl replied that it was a fake, and she tore the paper right in front of her. Lintella was confident in Syrinx because she found all the fakes that her appraiser didn't even know about, from stones to precious items. In this world, tycoons like Lintella also buy jewelry to show off their status and wealth, but someone decided to deceive her and sell her a fake. For the gold owner personally, this was not only a loss of money, but also a strong blow to her pride. Lintella asked again what exactly Syrinx wanted. The girl repeated that she needed a black pearl with black diamonds. The woman asked if the girl wanted to make a fake. The healer responded with joy and admiration that this was exactly what she planned to do. But for this, she and her partner need figureheads. It wasn't difficult for Lintelli, so she agreed to do it and asked what Syrinx's plans were for life. The girl replied that for now her plans were to restore the honor of the owner of the gold and take proper revenge. And after that, all people will know who and how they came from Lintelli, the girl hoped that she would also receive some rare stone. Lintel sympathized with the girl's behavior and her honesty. She knew that she would not be disappointed in her. One of the servants handed over a bundle with precious stones and documents of dummies. And when asked when everything will be ready, the girl confidently named the date. Everything will be ready the day after tomorrow before dawn. Syrinx was about to go, but Lintella stopped her and asked what benefit the healer would get from all this. The girl took the rose in her hands and replied that this would be payment. But the owner of the gold replied that these flowers were not worth a penny. The healer replied that it doesn't matter how much the flowers cost, but who they are is important. Such items are usually of greater importance than coins and jewelry. Finally, the woman asked if Syrinx was definitely not selling her handsome boy. But the girl stood her ground and added that she would not be able to sell it since she herself had recently bought it and was not selling this precious stone. The guy hugged the girl from behind and said that he had already been sold and could no longer belong to anyone. The girl bowed goodbye, but Heimdall decided to show who his owner was and hugged Syrinx tightly. He no longer planned to sell. One of Lintelli's subordinates led the couple through. 
They prepared a set of medicines for the wounded man and said that the healer knew this place. Syrinx saw that this was the same key that she had used the previous time. The place where the couple is going is safe, but no one can give 100% guarantee that someone will follow them, so they need to spend the night in this room for exactly one night. With fake documents and a bunch of crystals, doing any business will be much faster and easier, so the girl asked Heimdall to hurry up. They were walking along the alleys and suddenly the young man grabbed the girl and pressed her to the wall, covering her mouth so that she could not cast a spell. He couldn't believe that the girl would distinguish the original from the fake. He was terribly interested in how exactly the girl found out about it. Syrinx replied that she had simply seen this crown before, and thanks to the gemstone, she could tell whether it was a fake or not. The fake crown was professionally made, although it was created quite recently. That's why she easily found the forgery. And now it's time for questions from Syrinx. She asked if there is a hobby for this style of asking questions in this way, and what should she do if he doesn't answer her questions. Heimdall replied that he himself did not like thrills, but he really liked inflicting them on someone. He repeated the girl's words that she bought it and asked to take advantage of it. The girl got angry. The guy is not one to help the cause. The guy aggressively asks if the girl really wanted to buy him, to which the healer replies that she doesn't buy unnecessary jewelry. Heimdall said that although he was not needed, he was beautiful. But the girl didn't care how handsome he was, because she didn't need a jewel that would destroy her. The guy was sad to hear all this. He couldn't believe that he was useless to her. Syrinx moved away. The man made a logical conclusion that the girl's strength lies in the precious stones because she herself does not have a strong body structure and her strength is lower than that of an ordinary girl. Heimdall expressed his concern in this way, but added that if all the stones were taken from her, the girl would be left without a weapon. But he suggested we practice fighting, but the healer asked to lower the sword blade and talk normally. The guy refused to accept this offer because all he wanted to convey to Syrinx was that he was weak in private, but he needed protection. Heimdall shows kindness, or at least he knows how to show it. He compared himself to a gem and said that he was showing his affection and the girl was rejecting her in return. In the end, Syrinx agreed to train with the guy. She started sparring with the guy. He wanted to teach the girl a lesson and show that she shouldn't rely so much on her magic, after which the guy almost touched the girl's stomach with a sword. But for her, it was nothing, especially since the guy was constantly under the spell of chains, and he had just broken his promise. The girl warned that this would happen, and she was very sorry that she could not gloat over him a little more. But you need to hurry on business, especially since there is little offense. The tied-up guy was thinking about how to defeat the girl who could attack him at any moment. Syrinx asked if the guy's legs were okay, but if so, let him get up and quickly follow her. The guy is unhappy. The girl tied him up and is now forcing him to walk. It's like they were made for each other. Heimdall asked about the spell she used on him, and it makes sense that her spell would take some time to cast. The girl was surprised that the guy would just rush into battle. The guy added that he had a strange feeling. Even lying on the street with a girl is not so bad. But Syrinx did not appreciate the compliment, but said that he could lie like that for the rest of his life. The guy admitted and said that he was just conducting experiments. The girl didn't understand how the guy didn't value his body so much, but he replied that his body was perfect and that it could not be broken. Heimdall pretends that the absolute norm is to treat yourself as a tool. In any case, he won't be able to do anything because he's tied up. Syrinx stood in thought and thought about what room to allocate for the young man. She planned to put him in the barn. Suddenly the guy asked what the girl's real identity was, because not only does she know influential people, she also has the ability to distinguish a fake from an original. Heimdall was also surprised by Syrinx's skills because he had heard about magicians who cast spells using stones, but for the first time, he saw that they were used to heal. The girl decided not to answer anything and first advised the guy to recover. But he jokingly begins to ask whether it will be safe for her because once he recovers, it will be more dangerous. The girl calmly replied that the guy could try if he wanted her to press him to the floor and tie him up, or just nail him. Heimdall responded to this with a compliment, saying that the girl speaks very captivatingly. But Syrinx was not in the mood and responded negatively to the compliment, and it's the guy's face that just begs to be hit. The guy said that the girl might think that he sincerely offered to buy it, but to this, the girl replied that she did not eat spoiled food. Although the guy was annoying, the girl locked herself in her room. 
It was dirty there, but it's good that there is an easy place to spend the night. So the girl is very grateful to Lintelli. Suddenly on the table, she saw a list of wanted persons. Bounty hunters work on these lists. But due to poor drawing, nothing is clear, because the faces were more like caricatures. Syrinx remembered an interesting case when one of her neighbors turned out to be a wanted thief, but the knights did not want to catch him. She always remembers one phrase from her fourth patient. She was well-versed in corruption, so she said that many people pay extra well to have their portraits painted poorly so that no one will find the thief. Therefore, bounty hunters need to do a lot of work before catching someone. The girl found something interesting. They were looking for a woman age 24, with a beautiful appearance and a member of the Aiden family who was able to survive. The Aiden family is a family that used gems as a source of their powers, and that is why the Altar of Discipline decided to exterminate all members of the family. The whole family was branded as thieves because the Altar of Discipline has equal power only with the power of the Imperial family itself. All of her relatives were exterminated by the forces of the altar, but the real motive of the organization was to obtain the same abilities as their family had. All family members died unexpectedly and for unknown reasons. It's amazing, because out of the whole family, only one person survived, who did not make himself known only because he did not know how to use force. And it was Syrinx. The girl remembers how the boy personally told her when she was little that her entire family had been killed, and he personally pawned them. But he asked not to touch the girl because she was dear to him. Since then, Cyrix was no longer part of the Aiden family. After which, the main character of the first part of the novel, Sir Yuvan Forsetti, said they would later marry. After all this, the head of the altar, as well as the bishop of the church who killed her family, took the girl to the Duke of Adverse, and he adopted her. Now Frey, the main character of the second part of the novel, has become her sister. It turns out that Syrinx was the main character of the first part of the novel and had to die. Suddenly the girl woke up. She was dreaming about her past again. The second part will tell about the main character Frey and the main male character, her brother. Just like Syrinx, Frey lost her family and was adopted by the Duke. There was also a boy, Dante, who lost an eye when he protected them from his father. These two people felt exactly the same as he did. They all needed to escape. In the original story, Syrinx was slightly poisoned, after which she transferred her powers to Frey and died. This is how the story about her should end, but now she is alive. But she is wanted, because she is the only one with such powerful healing powers, which is why she settled where lawlessness reigns over power. It was hard to find her there. Syrinx began to search for information about the poison, as she was still destroying his body. And her goal was to find a gem that could fulfill absolutely any desire. The girl cannot leave her sister and brother to those who bullied them since childhood. The healer hopes that she can change everything because now she can use the power that she inherited. Inspecting the table, she noticed another letter. It was torn into several large pieces. It won't be so easy to find her because she does everything to cover her tracks. She and her name don't exist at all. Only Sir Yuvan personally Forseth will be able to figure it out. Syrinx heard a strange noise in the house. She was scared because she thought that someone else had come to spend the night in this house. But Lintella would not allow anyone else to come to this house. The girl calms herself and assures that all this is only because of this stupid dream. She walked down the stairs and saw Heimdall standing. He asked why the girl couldn't sleep. The healer replied that she had heard some strange sound and asked if the young man himself had heard anything strange. Heimdall replied that he had not heard anything like that, and most likely the girl had glitches, but she listened to the fact that she did not. Apparently, persecution, worries, and sleepless nights are taking their toll. The young man said that his physical capabilities were better than hers, so she tied him up. The guy took the healer by the hands and told her to calm down. Heimdall assured the girl that she would be safe because he was nearby. She can calmly go away to rest, and no one will disturb her. Suddenly, he took her by the tip of her ear and decided to give her advice. He said she didn't need to show that side if she didn't want to get caught. Suddenly, he asked if the girl wanted to sleep next to him. He can pet her until she falls asleep. But Syrinx refused and wished the guy a good night. Already lying in bed, the girl felt very pleased. The boy's words warmed her soul and she remembered them. Although she couldn't even believe that she was comforted by such a man. Also the night version of him. Heimdall wanted to kill Frey only because of the concessions of her parents, Aunt and Uncle Syrinx were to blame for everything. 
Having gotten rid of the guy's parents, they decided to sell him and his brother to slave traders. But in the end, Heimdall's younger brother died, and the young man himself was left completely alone in this cruel world, after which his personality could not stand it and was divided. But not everyone can console her, and for those who succeeded, she feels a sense of unity. When the girl woke up, Heimdall was cleaning the house and accidentally broke a plate, which woke up the girl. She asked if the guy was hurt. He apologized profusely for breaking the plate. The girl liked the look of the guy. Searing said that the guy shouldn't worry, because this is not her home. The guy was very surprised and asked where they were now. He instinctively came close to the girl. Searing said that the guy is quite close to her, but she can come closer and put glasses on him. The guy was tortured again. Glasses for Heimdall are not just an accessory. This is a tool through which his first personality is separated from the other by means of glasses. It shows that it won't do what its nighttime version does. That's why he takes glasses so seriously. Syrinx noticed that the guy was wearing a pink maid costume and joked that he definitely wanted to seduce her in this way. The guy blushed heavily and began to make excuses. Heimdall said that when he woke up, all his clothes were torn, and he decided to change into something else, and after that he wanted to cook something to eat. The girl remembered that the boy was a great cook. She saw that the guy had completely recovered by morning and looked completely normal. The guy asked how it all happened. When Heimdall woke up, he saw chains on himself. The girl replied that she tied him to her with chains, but he didn't have to worry because no one would see this. But the girl again began to joke that the daytime youth was a pervert, unlike her. But the guy was no longer so ashamed of the girl. She was surprised that his reaction changed and she asked why that was. The boy replied that he was already used to this. Syrinx said that last night he broke his promise and attacked him. Heimdall didn't know what the girl was talking about. He was surprised and wanted to know more. The healer said that he wanted to knock her down, and unfortunately, she could not beat him with a frying pan. So I just tied it up. But the guy said that this was too minor a punishment for him. He said that Syrinx could hit him, and he wouldn't say a word to her. But the girl said that you can't say that, because it's their common body, and if it's damaged, it hurts for both of them. But the guy did not want to hide behind the fact that he did not remember his concessions and wanted to take full responsibility for his actions. Syrinx noticed that the young man often takes responsibility for his actions, but he replied that this only happens to her. Heimdall was interested in what the purpose of this chain was. The girl replied that this was her guarantee of protection from him. After all, people like Syrinx can only defend themselves with the help of magic and spells. Although the spell will not work forever, it allows you to effectively maintain control over someone for a certain amount of time. When the Night One wants to attack her again, he will be chained at that very moment. And perhaps this is not very convenient for Heimdall, but it is ideal for Syrinx. The girl began to show how these chains work and asked the guy to come closer to her. As soon as he did this, chains appeared around, and thanks to them she pulled the guy towards her and added that she could control him. The man said that if their lips touched now, he would not take responsibility for it. Syrinx said that it looked like she should take over. But the girl immediately stood up and said that she was joking. And in any case, he will have to be patient and get used to it. And in a month, they will see how they will act. She told him to just think of it as her being on the safe side. And in return, Syrinx will heal him. In fact, when Heimdall asked her to treat him, he said it would take two months. Two months. In just two months, the second part of the novel will begin. And at this moment, Heimdall will gain enormous power. After this, he will have to face her adoptive father, Duke Adverse, and her fiancé, Esir, and she will, of course, support him at this moment. Since the main character wants the speedy death of these two people, she doesn't intend to hate Heimdall, and while they all will fight, Syrinx plans to escape with Frey. After all, even if Frey is not there, these three will still face each other. Heimdall is hungry for power, and Duke Adverse and Eris are not going to share it, and the main thing is that she had to die in the first part, but she's still alive. However, now they don't know what future awaits them. She suggested that the man eat first because she was hungry. Heimdall asked her to wait. He asked if he was her property. Syrinx said she wouldn't force him to do anything, so it stands to reason that he would. Heimdall was shocked. Syrinx told him not to worry because she wouldn't do that to him, until he attacks her. Syrinx is one of those people who does not like to take away freedom from another person. She added that she also went through this and does not like to see others suffer. 
In the first part, she felt a lot of harshness and insults, but her sister and brother still feel it. The healer stopped and said that she didn't know why she was telling him all this. She admitted that she really didn't want to do that to him, but at night he simply left Syrinx no choice. Therefore, now he should not think about anything. Just gotta focus on my recovery. She noticed that since he tore up the sofa like that, it must be because of this that his wounds appeared. The guy confirmed this. Searing said it wasn't her fault he got hurt, but she asks him for permission to undergo treatment. The guy asked if everything would be okay with her. Searing was surprised and said that it was her job, so everything was fine, and from time to time she heals someone, and Heimdall is not her only patient, but he is the only one who constantly returns for her treatment. The guy asked if he was the only one. Searing asked if this was important to him. They sorted this out. And the girl asked if he was interested in what happened yesterday. The girl offered to eat and then discuss everything. The guy said that he would do everything now. Because he's good at cooking, the healer didn't even know where to put her eyes. Despite waking up in an unfamiliar place, he looks completely relaxed. It looks like this is already commonplace for him. The man added that that is why she brought a person she trusts to the house. Syrinx was shocked. She didn't understand why he took everything for granted. Night Heimdall and Daytime Heimdall do not remember each other's memories. Syrinx asked how he knew she was the one who brought him. The guy said that she felt her presence in the house. That's why he decided to prepare something for her. The healer asked if he felt her presence. Heimdall confirmed this and added that he has a slightly developed such ability. This did not make the main character happy at all. She trained countless times to escape her adoptive father and Aesir. The only thing she was confident in was the ability to hide her presence. It is a big blow for her to find out that this person feels her presence. Because he is crazy and strong, proof of this is his bullying of Frey. But she hopes that won't happen this time. After all, Syrinx will not be able to just watch this. Syrinx does not understand why he decided that she was worthy of him trusting her. Heimdall added that he was very glad when she did not leave him near her house, although she knew how dangerous it could be for her. Syrinx said that despite the fact that she is a person who is madly in love with money, She's not one to ignore her clients. He asked what the lady was talking about. The healer added that in the future she might even become her client. She called him her favorite client and asked how much money he had. She asked him if he had ever thought about buying himself precious stones, because she can even give him a discount. The man was shocked that she had just said that he was her favorite. Syrinx was shocked by the thoughts that came to him when he heard these words. And by the way, they are now closer to each other, and he is already getting used to her, and to her face, he was just a sweetheart, and if Lintella asks to repay everything, then she can offer her this man at any time. The guy asked the healer what kind of place this was, and Searing said that this was her store. She couldn't open it, and the guy offered to help. After breakfast, they decided to get down to business. They could stay in the shelter for a few more days, but they simply don't have time for that. Heimdall added that he thought her store was in her home. Syrinx said that's true, it's just that this is her second store. And it's about the same size. The guy thought it was simply incredible. For three years her business was going very well here. Syrinx would have stayed here if it weren't for that chase after her. The guy was asking how her old customers would find her, but she said that they themselves would somehow find her. The girl thought that it needed to be cleaned up a little. If a person buys precious stones, it means that this person has money. Therefore, for such people, it is easier than ever to find information, which, moreover, can also make them rich. She asked the guy not to move, and she's going to show him her strength. The man was in complete shock. She watched as light began to appear. The gems began to fly. She cast a spell. The man was shocked that she cleaned up so quickly. More precisely, she simply returned them to the past. Now she needs to find a clean and untreated stone. Heimdall asked which stone specifically. It was a pearl. When the stone is big, it is not so beautiful. He wondered what she wanted to do with him. Syrinx wanted him back, in Creeksus Lane. At any moment, you need to be prepared for betrayal. As soon as you feel someone's hand on the back of your head, you should immediately grab it and then cut it off. If it weren't for this rule, she would already be dead. This helped her with the blessing of darkness who set a trap for her and with the knights who raided her store last night. But now they will look for it even more carefully especially those mongrels Torcha, to whom she will return this stolen item. And soon they will get what they deserve. The man was shocked that she knew his name. 
She herself noticed that she really called him by name. Syrinx asked him if he wanted to hurt people who had harmed them. Heimdall asked if she was talking about taking revenge. She said that it could be called that, and she decided to ask if he would be with her. And does he want to help her? Heimdall agreed to help her. The guy said that he would do everything so that she didn't ask and added that she could use his body for this. But the girl said that this was unnecessary. One way or another, the second part of the novel is just around the corner. This means that Heimdall will soon gain incredible power. Heimdall's revenge will begin with the betrayal of his mentor. The beginning of the second part tells how Heimdall gradually gains unreal power. But they will deal with this later. Since the situation is urgent, she will use help. Here are all records of gems received since last year. Since she has not systematized anything, he will have a lot of work. The pursuers are very organized, and there are many of them. Therefore, while they are under the protection of Lintella, they need to do everything as quickly as possible. Here is information about gemstones in the auctions of the House of Crixus. She collected this information through connections and money. The guy said he could organize it. This is what she expected. Syrinx asked me to write as legibly as possible, and then it's time to start. The main character looked at the stones. She noticed a low-grade counterfeit, and I had to be very careful. After all, when she reaches her goal... Nobody has to guess anything. The guy asked the main character if she had finished yet. Syrinx asked him for forgiveness for having to wait so long for her. Heimdall said everything was fine. The man added that she seemed very enthusiastic. He heard about people who heal with precious stones. But as far as he knows, this is a very rare occurrence. This means that daytime Heimdall knows that she has such abilities. She said it's not that uncommon. It's just that all these people are hiding behind the altar of discipline. She doesn't care that anyone might find out that she's a jeweler. Syrinx doesn't just want anyone to know her last name, appearance, and abilities. Heimdall added that he had organized all the information for her. He wrote everything legibly. It was a good job. Syrinx plans to sell Aslot's tears on the black market. The guy asked if she was talking about the black market. And is she talking about the market that is located in the first district? That's exactly how it was. Black Market is one of the names of the auction house. Unlike ordinary houses, the Black Market is sponsored by loan sharks and murderers. If Syrinx's guess is correct, then the jewels are from the list. These are skillfully made fakes. Heimdall asked how she knew about this. Syrinx managed to learn something during her departure, and some of them were made directly with her. She added that if she did everything herself, she would not have enough time. Syrinx thanked the guy for his help. And if everything goes according to plan, then they can sell that jewel. And the moment she shows this jewel to people, then they will go crazy, and the price will be so high that it will break all auction records. From now on, it is up to Heimdall to decide, to follow her or not, because the game they will play tonight will be very dangerous. If this gem is sold today at a good price, then they can take beautiful revenge on those people, because they will then be arrested because of this jewel, in addition, the Count's family wants to receive the necklace before the Imperial family. And if they find out that the jewelry is actually fake, then no mercy can be expected from them. These people will never see the light of day again. And they will experience the torture of the Imperial prison. And after that she will take revenge on Duke Adverse and Essir, which destroyed her family. The guy asked how he was. Syrinx did not understand when he managed to change. Syrinx asked him not to do that again. Heimdall asked what it was and what he did. She said that you need to warn before you change. He said that she herself could understand it. Syrinx asked him if he could at least once pretend to be a normal person, and he said there was nothing he couldn't handle. And he asked if this meant that she considered him normal, and he asked what it meant to her to be a normal person. He told the healer that she had missed something from the very beginning. Syrinx asked what he was talking about. All crazy people were once normal. And the crazier a person is, the better he is at pretending to be normal. Just like he does, Syrinx did not understand what kind of nonsense he was talking about. The girl said that they had to go because they didn't have much time. Heimdall asked where they were going. Syrinx asked why he pretended not to know, and she heard it herself. The healer asked if he would go with her, and if not, then he could leave. The guy was shocked that it was his handwriting, because he didn't think he was too lifeless, but it was clear that he tried very hard for her sake. Searing said that it was not he who helped her, and by the way, he asked what it was. It looked like a safe. She asked why he needed this, assuming he wants to rob her in her absence. 
The healer said that nothing would work out for him because her hand was needed to open the safe. He reacts to her prints. Heimdall asked if that meant he could open the safe by cutting off her hand. She asked if she wanted her to kick him out. She found. This will play a decisive role in their case. She gave the robe to the guy and told him to put it on, and now they could go. It's time to teach them all a lesson. She hasn't been here for a long time, and she doesn't know if she will succeed. And then Syrinx succeeded. And in the passages between the rooms, there are ranger magicians who can easily expose the disguise. Therefore, they use disguise, but here they will have to use something else. This is a secret entrance. Syrinx told the guy to come in faster. She's a master at finding places like this. This gem serves as a key for her, so the guy assumed. It was a trade secret. He was sad that she had her secrets. This stone is like his glasses. Even though he has good eyesight, he still wears glasses. He asked if he should tell her something interesting. With that door, everything was simple. But if they make a mistake here even once, then they are finished. They entered a secret passage. Dishonest people surround them everywhere. And this secret path is proof of that. The road to the auction house borders the most depraved area. And due to the strict surveillance, it is actually difficult to get into the auction house. And many rich people don't want to take extra risks. Therefore, people went so far as to hire a wizard who created a secret passage. And with this entry, they can enter the auction house for free. Although this is not entirely safe, Heimdall asked if there were any pitfalls. Syrinx said he was very smart. In fact, this staircase is not real. It is made of magic. And all she can do here is change the color of the stairs to purple. Everything else is an illusion. And as soon as a person steps on a step, it immediately disappears. The guy asked if there were any other nuances. But the girl said that was all. And as he already understood, Syrinx is not particularly strong in such things. If she had been alone, she would have long ago used her abilities and gotten out. So today the guy will have to try a little. She put his hand on her and called her puppy to follow her. The girl felt that she would have to repay him with food later. She learned about this route thanks to her fourth patient, who is an elite knight. She was so drunk that she could not walk on her own. Today, Syrinx will use this route for the second time. Last time she carried the carcass with her, but this time the going is much easier. That time it was difficult to walk and carry a drunk woman. The main character then recovered from this for ten whole days. Of course, she can use gems to fly, but flying is very taxing for her. They should only go where there is purple, and there at the end there will be a door. Heimdall asked how other people get there. Syrinx said that others simply bring a wizard with them and fly with him. The guy understood everything. Heimdall took the lady in his arms and asked if it would be better. Syrinx did not understand why he was smiling. The guy said it was because he really liked everything. After all, her life now depends on him. She didn't understand how a person could be like that. Although the answer was already obvious, the main character was shocked by his strength. Heimdall seemed to take off. Simply incredible abilities. Part two of the novel has not yet begun and it is already so strong. Syrinx did not understand what would happen next. Indeed, in the middle of the novel, it was said that the strength of this man would go beyond all human limits, and she assumed that he had already acquired this power. Syrinx told him to just try something stupid. The guy asked if she was scared. The main character is already going through a lot, and he does all sorts of nonsense when he gets bored. This really infuriated her. Below there was only an endless abyss, and if they, if they fall, it's the end for them. Syrinx was very angry with Heimdall, but the guy didn't understand what it was. The guy asked if she called him. The girl was shocked that they fell and began to look around. Heimdall asked if she thought they would fall. The guy added that he just wanted to look at her scared. Syrinx was shocked that he was mocking him like that. The man said with a smile that he was interested in what she looked like when something completely unexpected happened. He's the crappiest partner ever. Syrinx did not understand why it was necessary to take it out on her. The girl added that she was not going to dance to his tune. She ordered Heimdall to let her go, and the guy looked at her with a grin. She thought she was crazy for deciding to trust this guy. But Syrinx does not want to use stones, and she needs to somehow get there herself. Heimdall asked her where she was going. He put his hand on the girl's waist. Heimdall promised her that he would not do this again, and if she trusted, he would carry her through to the very end. He promises. Heimdall is one of those who keeps his promise. The main character said that these words belonged to Heimdall's late brother. 
And if he himself began to say that he would keep his promise, it means that he is determined. The healer said that she would believe for the last time. The guy said with a smile that she made the right choice and added that today they are partners after all. He suggested that Syrinx discuss in detail what they would do next. And he added that they can just improvise anyway. He passed all in one breath. And he has very strong legs. Syrinx said with a smile that it was good when he had such strong legs. Heimdall said that there are other strong points in his body that he can show. The girl asked him to stop talking nonsense. Syrinx realized that his acting was really good. But he shouldn't worry because soon he will have the opportunity to show his wonderful acting skills to everyone. Also, Heimdall should have moved away from her. He asked why she didn't like his face. And if she really doesn't like something, then she can tie him up. That's what she did before. Syrinx said that she simply preferred his face with the expression of an obedient man. And Heimdall didn't like being compared to anyone. And he will try to ensure that the healer does not do this again. Syrinx didn't care what he decided. He was surprised. He couldn't believe that he was collaborating with her and learning something new about himself every time. The main character was shocked by such insight. She indicated where they needed to go. It was just not clear whether they would be able to maintain cooperation. Large walls as high as the Imperial Palace. This is truly a very huge room, in which all the dirt of the city collects. This is the fortress of all black goods, which is called Rochtable. This is the terrible place they found themselves in. This is an underground city. Syrinx thought it was very cool. In front of them was a space distortion barrier. They say that the Archmage who made it 300 years ago, using 300,000 magic stones, it definitely took quite a bit of money. Heimdall was shocked, and himself noticed that she had definitely spent a lot of money. It was one of the largest black markets in Crixus. Syrinx said they don't have time, so they should go. The path to the main building of the auction house consists of five roads, and they went to the most disadvantaged. One man was selling fresh corpses, and precious stones were immediately being sold next to him. There are a lot of suspicious people on this road, and this is beneficial for them, since they can easily go unnoticed. They were trying to catch a robber near them. Heimdall asked if they were on the road to the auction house, because it is no different from ordinary gateway markets. Syrinx said everything was correct. They need to go along the noisiest road. The guy asked what other roads looked like. They are all different, but if you take a road completely opposite to this one, it will be the blue road. It means blue blood. There are corrupt nobles with high-ranking priests there. Those aristocrats are very difficult people. Heimdall knows this himself. The guy asked if he knew well. Syrinx realized that she had let it slip. The girl said she just thought everyone knew about it. But if he doesn't know, then he should just forget her words. Syrinx almost got caught. Stories about blue bloods and dukes are a very sensitive topic for Heimdall, and he must not understand that the main character knows everything about him. She needed to take matters into her own hands. Fortunately, Heimdall then silently followed the healer. Syrinx also walked in silence, afraid that she would say something unnecessary again. And then they finally reached the auction house building. The man asked them where they wanted to go. Syrinx gestured. The man said that they were on the third floor. Syrinx threw him a bag of money and said that there was no need to see him off. The stranger said that they needed to go straight along this road, and if they needed help, they could simply pull the rope that would be on the wall in the corridor. Syrinx asked Heimdall if he could hear someone's presence. But the guy took off his hood and said that only very distantly, and no one sees them. Nevertheless, Syrinx decided to say a spell just in case. It will only take her three minutes— and the crystal from her hand. Androdite, this is a mineral from the Garnet Group, which is also called the Shadow Gemstone. Heimdall understood his ally. She made them doubles. Syrinx said that, as he himself understood, this is a complex illusion made of precious stones, and they will replace them. She told the doubles that they could go wherever they wanted. She tried to hide as much as possible what she was capable of, but now she has no choice. By the way, she gave good stones to the person near the door, since it could provide a good position in the auction house. Heimdall thought that they would be closely monitored, but it looks like you don't have to worry about it. Syrinx confirmed this and said that they would look for them on the blue road. And besides, it is not customary at auction houses to reveal your identity. This is an important rule. Syrinx asked the guy to listen to her carefully. From this moment on, Syrinx is Countess Lodark, 
an immature aristocrat who constantly runs off to all sorts of nightly entertainment without her parents' knowledge. And Heimdall will play the role of her accompanying knight. The guy understood everything. They must act quickly before the illusion disappears. Northwestern part of the main Rostable building, second floor. They sell precious stones there, and this place is a kind of headquarters. There are eight floors in total. The auction house does not interfere in the affairs of the headquarters, unless some unforeseen situation happens. The caretaker is also quite hard to see, only in case of sale of goods of the highest possible value. However, they can be seen directly from the inside. Heimdall wanted to ask the girl something, but she told him that she was not a girl, but a mistress. He said he didn't think it was possible to just come up with a new appearance, and he suggested that this was the appearance of her friend. Syrinx confirmed this. The healer used magic to prevent their conversation from being overheard. She had curly hair and a sickly appearance. This illusion is the ex-husband of the main character. He is one of the heroes of the book. This is what Esir looked like Yuvan Forsetti in childhood. True, Syrinx corrected something. Here Heimdall's dark hair and these gray eyes are taken from Syrinx's younger brother. In other words, she took Dante's appearance as a basis. And it looks like Syrinx did very well. There are two bell ropes on the door, gold rope, for regular calls. But for everyone else, the situation is red. They were greeted. They are Rochettable's Northwest Urgent Case Management Team. This is a group for very important matters. They asked the guys why they were looking for them. Syrinx laughed at such questions with a smile. She said he was here to sell a family heirloom. The game has begun. Tonight, the healer will bring them to clean water. Syrinx began to ask, what kind of attitude towards nobles this is. No one carried them through, and no one even offered tea. The girl with a dissatisfied face asked what kind of ignorance this was. She expressed all her dissatisfaction by asking what kind of auction house this was. The men apologized and said it was their mistake, and they will deal with the employees who are guilty of this. Now she realized that these people were the kind who could kill a person. If he tries to judge them for something wrong, Auction Rochtable is divided into special and regular. A special auction is held on a special day, and today they will participate in a regular auction. And among the ordinary ones, there is a monthly one, in which large and rare items are collected. Often, at regular auctions, the list of all items is planned in advance. But to warm up the participants, sometimes some items are approved on the day of the auction. But in order for a person to be approved, he must have a truly interesting subject. That's why they haven't been able to agree for an hour. Syrinx screamed that it was not a fake, and she simply would not have come here. And Heimdall held her. Tears of Aslot, which was the highlight of today's auction, were also successfully auctioned. The operation of an immature child wanting to get money for selling stolen property was a success. After exiting, magic was used to distort conversations. Syrinx said that this is the basis for those who live in a remote place and don't have to worry that someone will reveal their identity. If there was a risk, then Syrinx would not even try to pull it off. Heimdall has asked her before, but will ask her again. He wondered who she was and assumed that she was an aristocrat. But Syrinx ordered him not to ask unnecessary questions. They were under surveillance as soon as they left the office and Heimdall felt it himself. The healer said that if he knew, he should be all the more careful. It was simply amazing. The guy asked how she knew how nobles behave, especially this ignorance. Heimdall felt as if she had experienced it herself, and it seems like she hates it. Syrinx asked if he knew how many nobles she had seen in her life, and there's nothing wrong with her acting abilities. Heimdall said that her movements, gestures, behavior, all this cannot be learned in a day, and she looks like she had to go through some hard training. The guy asked if he was right. All memories disappeared before the main character how she said that she was to blame and asked for forgiveness. Searing said that none of this was true, but Heimdall said that no, and he couldn't be fooled that easily. The girl kicked him and called him impudent. She didn't understand how he dared to put pressure on those who didn't want to tell stories about themselves. It was just disgusting. The main character was very interested in whether he would apologize to her. Heimdall admitted that he seemed to enjoy it when she was angry. The girl imagined him asking for forgiveness and saying that he did not want to upset her, and he just wanted to know more and asks not to be angry because she is his mistress. Heimdall said that if she had any requests regarding him, she could not hesitate to ask directly. He will answer everything honestly. The guy said that he used to be associated with disgusting nobles, 
Therefore, he knows about their behavior, gestures, and customs. But the more a person hates, the more impossible it becomes to forget about it. The healer asked if he wanted her to sympathize with him. She was able to play a noblewoman well because she was used to learning everything for the sake of money. The guy licked his lips. Heimdall asked what she looked like when she cried and added that he would really like to see it once. Syrinx thought he was crazy. The healer warned him again. One more such trick and he will be buried on the riverbank. But Heimdall said he wouldn't. And he is very interested in the result of her plan. The guy added that watching them looks quite mysterious. He assumed that she could deal with them too. Western part, second floor, place 1445, we had to take our place. Syrinx told Heimdall that their place was number 1445. Midnight. The bells are ringing. Now it's time for the auction to start. The couple went inside. The man said they could ring the bell at any time if they needed anything. Syrinx asked why he was standing and ordered alcohol to be poured. That stranger was shocked. But Syrinx said that this was not for him, but that he was telling his subordinate. Heimdall asked the lady if she would still do him the honor and allow him to lie at her feet. Syrinx considered him a boor. The man understood that he needed to leave here quickly because he heard that the subordinate was in pain and he squealed. Syrinx was shocked that the man left very quickly. She cast a blocking spell so they could discuss what to do next. The spell won't last long. Syrinx has reincarnated again, and Heimdall asked if this was her hobby. The healer asked if he wanted her to show something interesting. She took off her robe and was dressed in a gorgeous dress. She kept the stone in her robe. She had to deceive like this more than once, so she had time to prepare in advance. Since everyone will see their face, they need a backup appearance with which they can escape. It's all about to start. The guy asked if she wanted to personally participate in the auction. Syrinx said that their doubles would do it. And besides, she already imagines how shocked everyone will be from what they bring to the auction. Syrinx thought that the news that Aslot's tears would be auctioned had already reached the VIPs. And there will be many people willing. The more Heimdall listens to her, the more I wonder what else this little head has come up with. Syrinx asked him if he had thought of this himself. The host welcomed the guests, and he said that the time for the auction had already come. Syrinx said that the rest is simple. Today, Syrinx will sell Aslot's tears at the best price. The Blessing of Darkness must have already heard about the auction. They must be here somewhere. Now you just have to wait. Payment for the winning bid is due upon completion of the auction. In other words, the winning bid can increase as much as necessary, but until the auction closes. Therefore, after the winning bid is announced, they will slowly leave the auction house. But there is one problem. The people present are high-ranking nobles. They will likely have a lot of questions. It was not clear why the gem appeared at auction without warning. The main character did not understand where he suddenly came from. It is impossible for anyone to doubt the product. Syrinx wanted to dispel all doubts. Syrinx asked if he wanted to see this crazy spectacle and asked when the auction price skyrocketed. But it won't be easy. After all, Syrinx will play a game in which her life will be on the line. It is very dangerous, but she shouldn't be afraid and give up everything. Torture will soon learn his stuff. And by the way, she needs one crazy person who could light the fire, and he wants to try. Heimdall only wanted to monitor the process. None of them are partners. Syrinx knew so. Heimdall said he doesn't want to be the center of attention. The guy asked when she had time to come up with this plan. The girl asked what if she was a fortune teller and created this plan ten years ago. Heimdall said that if she wanted to, she didn't have to answer. Searing suggested making one thing clear. She also doesn't like to be the center of attention. And she wants to live longer than anyone else. She is actually good at devising plans with a high probability of success. Syrinx never thought about losing, because all she wants is to survive. They asked for forgiveness for having to distract them, and apologized for being rude, but one person asks to meet with them. The man had a manager's badge. Syrinx asked who wanted to see her. The man said that this is the deputy manager of this auction house. Syrinx was shocked and did not expect this at all. It was that famous psycho, and the girl didn't understand why he needed her. This has never happened at auction before. This may be the owner of the auction, Count Amanti. Syrinx can use magic, but the stones remain only as an illusion for escape. The lady asked if this is how people invite people to meetings. The man apologized and said that they had not yet made it. The girl needed to stall for time. Syrinx asked if she had to go, and if so, then he should ask properly. 
She asked if he should be crawling at her feet or something. Aslot's tears are extremely important to them. Therefore, he must do everything to ensure that she puts them up for auction. The man knelt down and asked him to show them his mercy. Syrinx did not understand what to do if they could quickly get away from them. Heimdall knelt down and addressed his master. He took Syrinx's hand and asked if he could stay here. He asked the Lord very much. Syrinx didn't understand what was wrong with his expression. The man was shocked, and Syrinx did not know what to say. The girl suggested that he wanted to participate in the auction instead of her. It seems that this is not the first time he has uttered the word master, and she thought he had been through a lot in slavery in his time. So is she. But whether Syrinx could trust him was not clear. She asked him how he dared to interrupt her when she was speaking. Heimdall apologized. Heimdall said that he always treated her with nothing but respect. No matter how much Syrinx would like to, she still needs to go. He said that if he took him with him, it would only hurt her pride. Syrinx ordered him to stay here. She said in a whisper that if he messed up, she would definitely kill him. The guy said everything would be fine. The main character simply had no other choice. She ordered to lead her. The man was grateful for the understanding and pointed out where to go. We'll have to entrust the auction to Heimdall, and then they will need to somehow escape together. The feudal lords of each district in Crixus are closely tied to the leadership of the empire. In other words, they are the local core of power, and the main one in the first district. He is the most cruel and merciless, loving violence, a real dictator. It's scary to imagine that the deputy manager, who is directly under the leadership of this person, is looking for her. Syrinx didn't understand why she was so worried. She wondered how many people were hiding here. She asked if he called her. The man confirmed this. The suspect has arrived. Syrinx was shocked and thought that she had now been named as her suspect. They were ordered to kneel. They hit the man and noticed that she was strong, this unique voice. Syrinx was told that if she passed out, they would immediately throw her into the river. This drawling speech. She knows this man. The healer screamed and asked who he was. Head of the first gambling district. Widely known as the king of violence and gambling who beat the bloodied Heimdall and sent it to her. This is the main villain of the novel, a mentor named Isla Crow Blackback. Aslot's tears were already exposed. There are two items left, and the presenter was grateful to everyone for waiting. And since today is the monthly auction, they have something special in store for people. Tears of Aslot and the highest price. Considering the cost of the jewelry, this shouldn't be too hard. Although, it doesn't look like the best decoration. Heimdall heard all the conversations in the hall. There they talked about what would happen if they were caught, and there were many questions about Aslot's tears. This city is disgusting. Laughter, desire, organs, and even souls are sold here. Citadel of Dirt. And she wants to become a part of it. Heimdall asked if she understood that he was very expensive. Therefore, she must be ready to pay today. There was something little information. Marquis Kochikin is located here, and also Count Raiden, and the owner of Ecopte. Lady Canaria, too. Looks like everyone wants to get their hands on the jewel. The most important guests have arrived. If they all came, then that means only one thing. Someone has already spread the word about the jewel. Lintella Dulcines. The guy asked how many people were here now. Syrinx said four or five because Jerome left. To raise a huge winning bid, it is not enough to have a good product. Competition. Those who are crazy about jewelry need some extra motivation. This means that we need to help her colleague and whet their interest. An exciting drink will soon be served on the ground floor. This is a common practice at auctions to calm the tension and to make everyone feel more comfortable. Heimdall said that then he would have to try to get information out of these important people. Perhaps they will learn something new. The seats of special guests are protected. Therefore, the slightest step in the wrong direction, and they will immediately suspect danger. Heimdall invited her to go. It was his style. She asked if she would receive any benefits. And the guy said it was also fun. The guy said that he was doing everything possible and was interested in how she would pay. Everyone has been waiting for this for a long time. They presented them with today's surprise, Aslot's tears. Initially, this jewel could not be obtained, but now a good opportunity has arisen. All people participating in the auction will compete, and the price should increase quickly. A lot of people want to get a necklace. It was not clear who spread these rumors, so many important clients have already gathered. Syrinx said that in fact, even the Imperial family is chasing this jewel. The man asked if they were talking about Lady Moran Enmu. 
but the man said Lady Canaria. He understood everything. The second district will handle the rest, and they just need to sell it. He told Syrinx that many people were looking for her. Even this weakling can't find her. It was not clear what was going on there at all. Syrinx saw Torcha in front of her. Typically in gem heists, there is a planner and an executor. And if the performers are a blessing of darkness, then the planner must be Isla himself. They seem to have been collaborating from the very beginning. Isla asked Syrinx how she knew him. She didn't understand how she could know them and asked to let her go. Isla said that in fact it was he who ordered them to steal Aslot's tears. Looks like that jeweler did a pretty good job, because he ordered her to be used as bait. But he didn't expect things to turn out like this. But how did this necklace fall into her hands again? He wants to end it all quickly. Then Isla decided to go. It was a fake. And then Isla thought about the question, where's the real necklace then? Syrinx asked him why she should tell him this. Isla quickly shouted and asked for magical tools to be brought to him. The girl began to transform and everyone already realized that it was her. Torcha realized that this was the same woman. He was absolutely furious. Suddenly someone kicked him and told him to stand still. Isla was shocked. The man held Syrinx by the neck. The girl was asked where the real jewel was. Since she was selling counterfeits, it doesn't matter anyway. Therefore, she must now tell where it is. But Syrinx said she didn't want to. The man was simply furious. The guys came running and told the gentleman that they were in trouble. The Imperial Knights invaded him. Asla didn't understand what they were doing here. The man asked where the guards were. But they said that this was an order from the Emperor, so they could not do anything. Isla asked if they were already here. They confirmed this and added that the knights had already taken the prisoner. And they found the Isla mark on him. The man asked again. Torcha couldn't believe it. The guys added that he said that he stole Aslot's tears precisely on Isla's orders. The men began to say that they would explain everything. Isla turned to them and said that they said everything went well. But there's nothing here. Torcha said that when they stole the necklace, they grabbed two assistants. And Torcha thought that they immediately committed suicide. Isla asked why no one told him about this then. It's not over yet. Count Amanti burst in and said that he had proof that their auction house was selling counterfeits. Isla asked how he knew about this. He didn't understand who handed them over. First, they must solve the problem. The man said he would do everything to prevent anyone from getting here. Searing said it looks like it's all because of her. In fact, she was the one who made this fake. And it was she who reported to Count Amanti. They tried to catch her, but Syrinx began to run away. Torcha definitely came from the other side. This means that there must be some other way out. The soldiers made their way towards them. Isla did not understand what to do. Syrinx, I found a brick and opened the exit. They reached Count Amanti to fuck her. But now she fucked them all. Isla said that she would definitely burn in hell, and the girl said that she would give up this place for him. She ran downstairs, and I didn't understand how long ago the magic dissipated so she had to hurry, but it was already too late. Torcha was shocked. The girl asked the lady what she was doing here. It was the feudal lord of the Assassin's Guild Street. She came to personally deal with the one who broke the rules. Her first patient, her name is Hygia. She was lying right in front of the house. She was being prepared for death in the fourth district. First rule, this is not to unite with the feudal lord of another area. Torcha said that they were simply threatening them and the other man has already received it in the face. But not only that, they have yet to respond for drugs, prostitution, and human trafficking. They even had a precedent for smuggling weapons with alchemists. They are simply not murderers, but bastards. And if they didn't want to die, then there was no need to get caught. But now they will suffer severe punishment. Syrinx realized that she had just given her a signal. It looks like she wants to save her this way. This meant that she needed to leave quickly. She was ready to cover the healer. Syrinx said she felt like she shouldn't have even used sign language. Kigya said that a gift was waiting for her downstairs. Syrinx asked what the gift was and added that she had never seen a smile on her face. The girl told the healer that she thought it would be useful to her. Hygia said that they would see each other again. Because Torcha was in cahoots with the feudal lord from the second district, he is publicly executed. But she would like to beat him before he is killed. She looks like she's very tired. It was very nice to hear this voice. She leaned on Heimdall and closed her eyes. The guy asked if she was okay. Searing sighed and said yes, and now she is the most alive. There are many soldiers below. He picked up the girl and said that he assumed it had something to do with her. Searing asked how he got here. 
Heimdall said that the woman in black told him to wait for Searings here. The healer said that if he was nearby, then she didn't understand why he didn't help her. Heimdall said that he had important work entrusted to him by his master, and Heimdall is an obedient slave. Syrinx considered him lazy. She asked what was going on with the auction house. The guy said everything was going well. Until the arrival of Count Amanti with the knights, who made a mess. At that moment, the people in the hall were well warmed up, and Aslot's tears appeared on the stage. The price instantly soared to its highest level. And when a successful bid was placed, the knights have invaded. It was a complete mess. Well now, she wants to hear her story. The tears of Aslot that were given to her were initially fake. And this fake was made by Syrinx, and it was she who brought the counterfeit to the Count before the Blessing of Darkness stole the jewelry. And in fact, Syrinx knew in advance that they would steal the necklace and try to give it to her. Thanks to her excellent ability to make fakes, she had a large flow of clients. Therefore, she often went on business trips from one area to another. But one day, she saw a wounded child lying on the street who had been attacked. Judging by his numerous wounds, one could say that he had lived with murderers since his wounded childhood. Syrinx felt sorry for him. Therefore, the main character simply decided to cure him. He pulled the girl by the cloak and said that nothing would hurt him, and Syrinx thought that he had forgotten about it. But then she met this child again. She was shocked. The guy handed something to the girl and said that he didn't want to be caught, and asks her to take it quickly. And in that note, because of which the child risked his life to give it to her, it was written that the Blessing of Darkness would try to team up with someone to steal Aslot's tears and it said that they wanted to find bait that they could then set up. She left this child in the care of a human and went to work. After some time, it was revealed that the person behind the Blessing of Darkness was the human owner of the auction house in District 1, and it also became known that he had been selling counterfeits for a very long time. And after she was chosen as bait, Syrinx went to Count Amanti to inform him of the impending danger that threatens the necklace of Aslot's tears. Syrinx suggested making a fake which no one can distinguish from the original, even the graph appraiser. Then she advised us to put this fake on display. In the end, the Count, after much deliberation, accepted her proposal. Aslot's tear necklace was stolen, more precisely, a fake necklace. Then Heimdall himself knows everything. In the end, it was a fake. And she also managed to make one proposal to Count Amanti, so that he comes to the auction house today. And the Count specifically allowed all the thieves to escape except two, with this fake necklace, after interrogating two caught thieves. One committed suicide, but the other dutifully told everything. He even let it slip that the Lord of the First District was behind them. And after the information received, it became much easier to punish all the new ones. In addition, many would like to take the place of the head of the auction house. And since Count Amanti belonged to the Imperial family, this means that he himself belonged to the Imperial family. This means that the Emperor himself would take care of this matter. The girl asked what this black fog was. Some strange fog has just formed near Heimdall. Heimdall said that he thought it was her imagination and that the girl seemed very tired. Syrinx herself agreed with this, and then the main character thought about whether they were walking too long. Heimdall added that it looked like they were lost. Syrinx was shocked because she had definitely used magic that was supposed to lead them to the exit. She asked the guy to wait. Hemdal did not understand what it was. Syrinx took out a gem with a detection spell. The stone gives a signal. It was not a wall, but a door. Syrinx noticed this. She asked to open it. There are gems there, also of high quality. Syrinx and Heimdall saw a large mountain of gold in front of them. Eureka. The guy asked if she was happy. The girl confirmed it. The healer did not expect to find Princess Rosathea's crown in the room. They found the jewel and did not break their promise to Lintella killed two birds with one stone. With the stolen jewels, they changed their appearance again. Heimdall thought they could leave now, but Syrinx said no. They have one more thing to do. In front of them, they saw a beautiful girl. She came closer and called Syrinx a beauty and asked for forgiveness because she was confused with her friend. Syrinx forgave her for her rudeness. The woman said she would go. The girl gave something to the girl, and Heimdall asked what it was. It was a jewel that had a wiretap in it. She had already taken a risk by going against the Lord of the First District. Therefore, Syrinx is simply obliged to see the matter through to the end. The knights who surrounded the house began to search for the Lord of the First District. Thanks to the Syrinx fakes, 
and also because Aslot's tears were stolen from Count Amante himself, they will definitely be punished for selling fake jewelry. And with the help of a fake ID and Count Amante, they will be able to safely get to the carriage prepared by Lintella. Syrinx asked what she had there. She wondered why this bag was so big. They promised each other. He eventually pulled out a coupon from his pocket containing the winning auction bid. The winning bet on the check is, Heimdall kept his promise. At the highest price, he said that his mistress never forgets about her servants, and now it's her turn, the mistress, to keep her promise. She didn't understand why he decided to fulfill his promise in good faith. The guy was waiting for praise in his direction. Breaking the record for the highest bid is just her personal goal. But of course, the purpose of her revenge was the timely entry of the knights into the game. In particular, she would like to see the auction house destroyed by angry knights. They deceived everyone there by selling counterfeits. The guy did not understand what it was and asked whether the owner should reward his slave for a job well done. In addition, next time he may simply not want to comply with her demands. Syrinx did almost everything herself. Heimdall asked how she got to the exit. The girl thought he was impudent and the guy laughed. The man asked if she thought he was honestly helping her. He walked up the stairs, coupon with the highest bid. The girl did not understand what he wanted from her. Syrinx asked the handsome guy if he wanted to receive encouragement himself. She asked if she should pet him or take him for a walk. The main character feels great. What could be more exciting than her defeating those who tried to use her as bait and kill her? And thanks to this mood, she can't even be mad at this man. The guy asked if she really would do everything for her. The man held the girl close to him and said that then she should sleep in her house. Syrinx was shocked and asked what this meant. The man admitted that he wanted her to let him live with her. It was strange because she herself put shackles on this man, and she doesn't understand why she feels as if he was the one who put them on her. Syrinx said that they would do without encouragement. Heimdall said that someone must be embarrassed and suggested that they go home and talk there. Syrinx asked who said they would get back together. The guy said that he was her patient, since she forgot about it. It looks like his game isn't that bad. His face doesn't look good. Syrinx turned around and took the guy by the hand and said that they were coming. The guy obediently agreed. In the end, they went to the carriage. She didn't understand what was going on. It looks like there was a fight between the auction house workers and the knights. A lot of people gathered at the entrance, and a huge number of knights lined up, and all near the same carriage, armor and uniform with the sign of a white lily. This pattern can only be worn by the highest elite, directly under the control of the temple. Knights of the Lilies, called Aralis, and the man who is chief among them. She recalled how the man said that he was the one who denounced her family, her ex fiance the devil that ruined her life, his name was Esser Yuvan Forsetti. The girl decided to remain calm. The guy came up behind her and asked her if she was okay. She needed to calm down. After all, she understood that sooner or later this could happen. The temple hosts a lot of different events. The temple's faithful dogs, the knights of Forsetti and the knights of Aralis, eradicate all heresy. Anytime, anywhere, they can go anywhere if it is necessary for their mission. Besides, he wouldn't recognize her in this guise anyway because she cast very strong magic. It's all thanks to the gem she has. Syrinx has learned to survive, in stupid alleys and in an endless chase. Everything is fine. If they ran into each other again, she would just have to get past him. They approached the red carriage. The guy asked if it was too catchy. Syrinx asked if he was now thinking about whose identity she borrowed. Syrinx noticed that the carriage was too luxurious. The girl added that Lintella seemed to like it too much and was wondering whether to give it to her. After all, she will give him everything he wants, and unfortunately, he prefers the healer Syrinx. The main character thought that this luxurious carriage was a hint from Lintella. She wondered what would have happened to them if the operation had failed. They could go on this carriage to the outside world. Lintella also took a risk as her people invaded the first district. It's better not to think about it, because in any case, they succeeded. The man offered to help, but Heimdall said that he was on his own. The man asked the lady to sit in the carriage. The servant asked to do it himself, but Syrinx said that it was not necessary and everything was fine. Heimdall took the girl in his arms. Syrinx asked what he was doing. The guy said it was safer that way. The girl knew that he would say so. Syrinx asked her to let her go, because it seems to her that they are not in such a relationship. The guy was annoyed to hear this, because she had already seen him naked. The guy was offended. Syrinx was so tired and decided to pretend that Heimdall was a pillow. 
The girl asked him not to touch her hair, but Heimdall didn't understand why, because he thought she liked it. She didn't answer, and the guy asked why she was smiling so much all this time. Syrinx liked Heimdall's warm hands. The man added that he could warm her up in other places, and Syrinx had very cold hands. The girl felt his cheeks burning, and he seemed very tired too. He has such monstrous tenacity. To do this, you need to be a very strong person. Besides, he is very patient. He always pretends that everything is fine and copes with all problems himself. He asked Miss why she was so weak today. Syrinx didn't know and said it was possible because he was so handsome today. Heimdall was pleasantly shocked that he was handsome, but it was a pity because he wanted her to be sincere with him. Syrinx asked if he had fought with anyone before their meeting, because she saw bloodstains on his clothes. The healer asked what happened at the auction house. The auction house upstairs was very noisy, so he decided to go there, and as it turned out, there was a slaughterhouse there, and he saw how the guards desperately tried to stop the knights, and then Heimdall fought with the knights, and during this time Isla had already escaped. The knights mistook him for an auctioneer, and the guards thought that he was a runaway slave, so they all attacked her, and Syrinx said it was all because of his clothes. In any case, then he went to the healer, and it seemed to him that she was in danger. On the way... Heimdall accidentally met a woman in black and then began to wait for her. Syrinx said he was too generous for a one-night stand. The guy hoped that she would generously repay his kindness, but for today they will stop there, but for now she can rest. We arrived at a place that is located quite far from the alley where Syrinx lives. Thanks to this scroll, they can teleport. It seemed to him that she herself knew the destination. Syrinx was very grateful, and she asked me to give something in the bag to Lintella. And she asked me to say that she kept her promise. And now they can go. Syrinx will treat the guy. They teleported. It was cold. Syrinx didn't realize when she fell asleep. The body was very heavy. It feels like she is now dissolving in water. Syrinx smelled a very pleasant smell. Heimdall told Miss to at least take off her shoes. Syrinx asked if he could take off his shoes himself. The guy was shocked. He thought they were already done playing hostess. Syrinx smelled the pleasant smell of soap from this man. It's definitely her homemade soap, but it has a more elegant scent. If he had been born a different person, it was not clear whether he would have been like that. The guy said that it would be too nice if he told her to hurry up and went to wash her face. Searing said that there is no need to say that because it sounds like they are friends. Heimdall said he thought they were already friends. In a few hours, it will become light. And at that moment, this man will disappear. The guy said that he thought he saw something luxurious and asked if it would be magic. Syrinx said she loves luxury, as he thought they have a lot in common. Syrinx told him to sit down on the chair. The guy sat down and asked if she wanted to talk to him. Syrinx asked if it would hurt. And he likes everything soft. For example, the lips of the Syrinx. The girl said she was sorry, because she likes it when it hurts. The light spread throughout the body. This means that Heimdall is covered in wounds. The healer doesn't understand why he has so many wounds, and he even took a shower with these wounds. Syrinx finished and asked what it was. Himdal took the girl's hand and asked her if they would have a party. Syrinx was in shock and did not understand what he was talking about. Come to think of it, there was something like that in the carriage. And she, half asleep, agreed to have a party with him. The girl asked if he wanted to have a party like this, although it didn't matter who was wearing what outfit. Today, Syrinx achieved her goal but he doesn't understand why she doesn't look happy. The girl agreed to do this. Today, Heimdall was somehow unusual. It's a secret, but she actually has a special power. If this is a secret, then it is unclear why he told it. Heimdall has already said that he wants to get closer to her. Syrinx agreed and told him to drink. The guy said it was delicious. Syrinx said that this is not surprising, since it is the most expensive wine in Andrew's store. The guy remembered that it was that neighbor. As expected, this hidden wine is delicious. The guy understood and said that then he would ask who she would allow to steal her. Searing said she agreed and added that she was quite attractive, but she is not someone who can be stolen by just anyone. Heimdall said that everything is very difficult. Searing asked what interested him so much. Searing said that today is such a good day, so she will do him a favor. Searing said he could ask any question. However, she will answer as she sees fit. The guy said that the alcohol was very strong and asked her just not to say that she was drunk. Syrinx snorted in displeasure. Heimdall did not want to waste such a chance. The guy asked the miss what her goal was. 
Syrinx said business is booming. And also eat well and live happily. Heimdall asked what her goal was. Syrinx repeated that she wanted to eat well and live happily. The man said that's not what he's talking about. She said that she was looking for a special thing and lived in Crixus, hoping that this thing would be found here. Syrinx understood that she was in vain to raise this topic. Heimdall assumed that all these steps had been carefully read by her, until he began to command too deeply. Syrinx said that she had everything figured out. It was necessary to lay out all the information so that he would not have any questions. In addition, the girl must somehow pay him back for helping her, the first patient to appear on her doorstep. That day she met Hygia. She recognized her immediately and deliberately spread some rumors. In the first district, there is a capable person who can heal women. There was a cold calculation in everything she did before. The main character was so focused on her goal that she never even thought about it much. Syrinx acted freely because, thanks to the novel, she knew what would happen in the future. However, later she even managed to find out more than was known from the novel. Well, thanks to this, Syrinx took advantage of her connections with Lintella and managed everything at the auction. The guy asked who her enemies were. Syrinx said that she doesn't even know and is most likely the one who wants to get the same thing as her. The guy asked if these people were dangerous. They were very dangerous. Because they were the ones who shared the power of this country. Syrinx didn't know how she could know. The guy decided to call it an unprecedented risk, and he asked if she needed a dog that would protect her from this danger. It just seems to him that he will be fired soon. Before the start of the second part, Heimdall was the faithful dog of Isla, the head of the first district. However, Syrinx asked again about the dismissal. The guy said it was nothing. He has a curfew at home. But because he helped Syrinx, he thinks that he won't be allowed there. Syrinx said not to joke with her, the guy said she was right, and he lied. And, in fact, he is the dog of the head of the first district. The girl didn't understand why he was telling her this, but he thinks they realized that he was the one helping her. Syrinx didn't understand how because he was disguised. Heimdall said that by following Syrinx's orders, he had used up all his strength. At the auction, he had to use one medicine, which not even all district heads have. He is not the type to share such information. A dog is only good when it stays in its kennel, and she wants to leave them, and that's why she needs a new owner, and can provide her with temporary protection. Syrinx thought he was so strange, and didn't understand whether it was because of the alcohol. The guy was pleased when someone worried about him. The girl said he really felt bad and needed to finish. The guy said that he could put the girl to bed, and also the guy can take care of the house. And he is good at many other things, too. Syrinx was shocked. She ordered him to immediately let go of her hand, and if he wanted to drink further, he could drink from his glass. He asked her what kind of doctor would suggest drinking to his patient. Syrinx said she couldn't keep up, because first he was a patient and now he offers to be a partner. Heimdall said that this needs to be decided. A roommate sounds good. This was painful for Syrinx, and to be honest, it is not her fault that he will be kicked out of the first district, because he himself decided to help her. The girl asked why, then it seemed to her that she was to blame for this. The guy just hoped that he would pick up a stray dog. It seemed to her that Heimdall was sincere with her, but it is not clear why he decided to trust her. He thought her calculating side was very similar to his, but on days like these you can forget about miscalculations. He asked Miss what she really wanted, assuming she wants to destroy Isla. People who worked with him also have the same opinion. Everyone hates Isla. Heimdall asked if this would be enough to become partners. The guy definitely gathered his colleagues and created an organization. At the beginning of the second part of the novel, however, the original story seems to have moved away from its origins. He confused Syrinx, but he needed to answer something. Syrinx said her ultimate goal is not to get rid of Isla. Heimdall expected this and added that they had a lot in common. This does not mean that they lived the same life, however. The guy thinks that she also felt that there was some kind of connection between them. Heimdall asked if he was right. He added that after being kicked out by Isla, he really needed Syrinx. The girl didn't understand why. His body is strange, and Heimdall asked if it seemed that way to her too. For example, at a minimum, it has unusually good stability. The guy knows that such treatment is not absolute. For deep injuries, they simply sew the skin together, leaving wounds inside. Syrinx asked what he meant by this. The guy broke the glass and put the glass together with his wrist. Even if he is not suitable to be treated by Syrinx, he recovers quickly, 
these small cuts will heal quickly. But those wounds when he was lying near the Searing's house could not heal quickly because there is a different depth of the cut and Heimdall cannot recover to that extent. Heimdall's power is still unstable and there are blowbacks from healing wounds. It's painful enough, but her treatment also stabilizes these forces. Heimdall's strength and durability exceed those of ordinary humans. The temple considers this heretical, demon power, to maintain their power, the imperial family and the temple. People with special abilities were declared heretics. Such people were arrested or killed when discovered, revealing your secrets to each other. He and Heimdall became accomplices. He will either kill anyone who finds out his secret, or he will win you over to his side. Unusual body, the temple might like it, and she can run away and tell them he is mute. He was offended, but he said that he would try to return the favor because he wanted to live here. He asked permission to sleep in her house. From now on, Heimdall went to bed. Syrinx knows this man too little to know whether to trust him. But for a moment, she saw despair in his eyes. But first of all, she must go to bed. The guy crushed Syrinx. Heimdall has a fever again. She thought he was very stupid, but the guy asked when she would praise him. The girl didn't understand what he was talking about. Because they agreed not to do this. Also, he is too close, and therefore Syrinx asks him to move away. The guy did not move away, and Syrinx asked what kind of praise he expected from her. Heimdall continued to ask her to let him live with her. This is his payment. And so it was. And Syrinx is his taste. The moment she approached him on the stairs of the auction house, it was simply impressive. Heimdall said she was glowing and assumed it was because she was selling jewelry. Syrinx wanted to blow him up. She believed that Heimdall was delusional again and she won't kick him out, so he can already sleep. He's in bad shape, but so is Syrinx. Tomorrow, we need to finish the treatment. The guy asked Syrinx if they should seal this deal. The girl asked again, and Heimdall repeated. He said that Syrinx might catch her saying that tomorrow's Heimdall would not remember anything. The girl asked if she was doing business on credit. But of course, it depends on the situation. But Heimdall said that this was a lie. Syrinx wanted to say something, but changed her mind and said that she would not talk about it with the patient. The girl asked him to finish this and go to bed. Heimdall kissed Syrinx. The girl was shocked. The guy said that's all. Syrinx used magic to throw Heimdall away. He flew away and the healer called him a crazy idiot. It was a long night. Heimdall asked if there was anything he should know. Syrinx told the guy what happened a few hours ago. Heimdall said he had one question. Syrinx didn't mind. The guy asked the healer why she kept her distance. She told everything except that incident. Syrinx didn't know how to say it. She thought about it and realized that the atmosphere was tense at the time of the attack. It's kind of strange. And as much as she hates to admit it, she feels similar to him. He also hurts himself to help her. If it weren't for her brother being bullied, she might have enjoyed it. Syrinx said she was just thinking about how disobedient he was. Heimdall asked again, and she asked him what he would do. The guy didn't understand what she was talking about. Syrinx asked if he wanted to return to Isla. Heimdall thought for a moment and suggested that he should have told her everything. And maybe she liked Heimdall at night. Syrinx was simply furious. The guy started saying that she couldn't because he was better than him. No matter how you look at it, this side of him is normal. Besides, she prefers more of it. He turned to the girl and said that if she liked him more at night, then he could adjust. The girl was delighted. The guy immediately apologized and said that he had misspoken. Heimdall said that he was serious and maybe he was more attractive at night. Syrinx said that she doesn't want to hear it anymore, so she will say this. No, and definitely not. First of all, she doesn't start a relationship with a person she just met. The guy asked again as if he were someone she had just met. Syrinx said that she takes a long look at people anyway. Heimdall added that she is very careful in relationships. Syrinx herself confirmed this. After all, what starts quickly also ends quickly. A person never knows when he will die. This was also true. Heimdall said something that she misunderstood. Heimdall said he asked if she liked him at night. Syrinx began to remember what happened at night and therefore said that this was not necessary. She asked Heimdall what he was going to do and asked if he would return to Uzla. The guy bowed and apologized. Syrinx did not understand what was wrong with him. He could not tell the whole situation to the person who saved his life, and he is very sorry. Isla is such a dangerous person that he is afraid that Syrinx will also be in danger. The girl said that he didn't have to apologize because she understood everything. 
There is information that is dangerous even when mentioned. Heimdall apologized in autumn. In addition, all the information she learned while being with Isla is true. After Isla sent Heimdall to her, I wondered if he wanted to kill her. Many come to her for treatment with such intentions. And don't get carried away. But Heimdall wants it. And if they are already connected, then she can use this. And the guy asked if he should take care that she was not harmed. Syrinx thought that this side of him was to her taste, after all. Syrinx asked if this meant that he was returning. The guy confirmed this. Isla, enraged by yesterday's events, may hurt her. If she returned, she would have to deal with his anger. This makes her laugh. She pushed him away at dawn, and now she's contradicting herself. Now they live in her house, and Syrinx must finish the treatment she did not finish this morning. The guy was shocked. The main character decided that since he helped her, she would do something else for him. Syrinx said that, of course, he could not stay here for long. The girl heard that sometimes his abilities get out of control. And she said that as long as he was here, she would help. But before he leaves, he will have to pay. There were also some things that needed to be checked. Syrinx said that in the evening, he said that he had friends. The guy confirmed this. It was clear that the original plot had changed. Heimdall added that they are not close with them. She couldn't believe it was because they were criminals. Heimdall does not like them, or they only follow the night, Heimdall. The Syrinx is more inclined towards the daytime, and there were probably some contradictions. Heimdall asked if there was anything else he should know. The girl noticed that he just wanted to change the subject. She still wanted to tease him a little. Something happened that he should know about and asked if he should tell it. The girl said that he kissed her. The guy asked in horror if he had heard wrong. Syrinx said it happened. But he caused an explosion with the help of a spell and a gem. Heimdall asked how this happened. Syrinx said it might be due to fatigue, and she thought she would pass out or die from exhaustion. She said that's all he needed to know. The guy pointed the knife at himself and said that he did not deserve to live. Syrinx was shocked and told him not to do it. She didn't understand when he managed to get the dagger. Syrinx couldn't move it. She didn't understand why she had that face. Heimdall thought that he should die. A few minutes later, they managed to calm him down. This man will most likely survive a second scare. The healer said that to be fair, he asked her to let him live in the house and that sealed the deal. Syrinx simply did not have a seal. Heimdall said it was kind of witty. Syrinx said that if you think about it, there is not one but two residents. Syrinx asked if they should also put a seal. The guy was shocked. Syrinx said she just had to be fair and she thinks he should know his worth. The man said that she does not like straightforward people, but the girl, on the contrary, likes it. Heimdall was very honest. Syrinx said she knows. And in any case, Heimdall can stay here until Isla calms down. The man didn't know what to say to this and became very flushed. If he's sad about a broken deal, they can always fix it. Heimdall had already tuned in and told the healer not to be so careless when uttering those words, especially for his night. He asked not to give him a break, even a small one, ever. The guy held the girl's hand and almost cried. Syrinx said that in any case, he is to blame for Syrinx. But the girl said that you shouldn't say that. Even if they are the same, this identity is still more secure. And if you look closely, he is a little exhausted. Heimdall spends a lot of energy at night, which is why Syrinx believes that this is why he eats so well. But it's still the same person. And Syrinx thinks that one of them has already eaten. The guy noticed that someone had come. Syrinx said he didn't need to keep an eye on it. This knock is probably an unwanted guest. Syrinx told him not to let himself relax and be ready to protect her from the night. This is something of a warning. Heimdall turned away and said that he understood her. The girl told him to speak more confidently. Syrinx moved away from him and opened the door. The healer angrily asked who would pay for the door if that person broke it. The girl told the beauty to calm down. The girl asked if she slept well. Syrinx was shocked. It was Sidna Crosstail. Yesterday, the auction house bought the returned stone. The fourth patient she saved. Deputy commander of the elite city squad, Rickshas. She asked why the healer took so long to answer. Syrinx said that she had already answered. Regular visitors use a special method to enter. This allows you to distinguish them from unwanted ones. The girl said that she just forgot about it. Syrinx said she already knows how sensitive she is to knocking. Masidna promised to do better next time. She added that they had not seen each other for a long time. And Syrinx sat down next to the boy and asked if he remembered her. The girl said that everything was correct, but first they should talk inside because they might be being watched. 
Searing understood and said that she understood and asked her not to push anymore. Sidna was shocked that the girl had a guest. Sidna asked Syrinx if she opened a hospital with patients, but the healer told her not to say such terrible things and doesn't want her to get caught. The girl cheerfully said that she would cover for her. She thought it was a women's hospital. Syrinx said that this is not a hospital, and she does not know how it happened that she only saved women. The friend said that she understood and this man was her lover. Heimdall was in complete shock at this turn of events. Sidna said in a whisper that he was really handsome and began to say something about last night. But Searing said that this was too much, because there was a child here. Heimdall apologized, and Searing introduced the guy to Sidna. The girl asked him if he was scared. Searing said she was helping her. Sidna asked if she could just be a helpful big sister. Searing said she looks friendly, but it's not like that, as it seems. And as Heimdall sees, she is a knight. Sidna said that this is the child from yesterday's story. This is the friend who warned about how the blessing of darkness is trying to set her up. He is Sidna's informant. It was dangerous to stay at home, so she asked Sidna. The knight said that nowhere in Crixus was a safer place than the rickshaw patrol. Syrinx added that she did not say his name. The healer said her name was Syrinx and asked what his name was. But the girl said that it was not necessary because he was silent and everyone thought that this baby could not speak at all. The boy said that he was number 138. Heimdall said the baby does not yet have a name. 138 is the number assigned to the killer's apprentice. Names are given only to those who were able to survive multiple training sessions. Syrinx asked if he would mind her giving him a temporary name. The healer provided a precious stone, Topaz. It means hope, patience, and innocence, she asked. What's his name, Paz? For now, they will call them that. But later, if he doesn't like it, he can choose anything else. The guy said he liked it. The boy repeated with a smile that he liked this name. Sidna congratulated the boy on his new name. Syrinx told them to sit down and asked if they could make her some tea. Sidna said she would love to, but she had to go. Sidna said she was here to say the job was finished, and she added that it was a great hunt. The Imperial Knights eventually caught the Assassin Guild member and the shareholders, too. Syrinx was glad to hear this. But they didn't catch Captain Crow, and Sidna said that Searing should be more careful for a while. Either way, Isla is a slippery fellow. Sidna said that Searing has a curious lover, and the healer laughed. Searing did not think that this would lead to the collapse of such a large organization, since Isla, in addition to the auction house, also had a gambling house. The boy asked Heimdall in a whisper whether the angel's friend was also an angel. And by the way, Rochettable is closing for a while. The Lord of Gold of the Second Region will like this. Lintella will be delighted if the first area slows down development. Her foundation has a chance to secure its place. Apart from that, nothing special. In recent days, people have been disappearing in this alley. Syrinx was shocked and asked again, but she said no. Sidna said that she does not know how to explain these incidents. All the people seem to just disappear on their own. But it's too early to say what kind of incident this is. Plus, this isn't an official investigation, but she's not following it. The healer asked if it was a kidnapping. Sidna said there was reason to believe these were spontaneous movements beyond the control of the individual, but a new cult that has sprung up in the alleys looks suspicious. Syrinx asked if this was the conclusion of a capable knight. In the dark alleys of Crixus, where assassins, gamblers, and their followers hide, dangerous pseudo-religious organizations are emerging, but she cannot leave here. Otherwise, she risks falling into the hands of the temple as a heretic. You just need to disappear and appear at the right time. Especially on the streets of drugs and alchemy in the third district. There lived a dark wizard who worshipped evil gods. Sidna said she had a bad feeling about it. At first glance, they are engaged in charity. Syrinx asked if this was a problem. The knight said she thought it was a sect of poor people who met and performed rituals. But after this ritual, not only the poor... But it seems that the ordinary citizens participating in the ceremony have disappeared, and it's not serious yet. We need to keep an eye on them, because you never know when the temple's minions will come. They always come late and disturb her. The knight asked to let her deal with this. It will be difficult anyway. Besides, after yesterday's commotion at the auction, there is unrest on the street. The knights of the temple and the Forseti family are still scouting the streets, so she needs to be careful. Syrinx told Sidney not to get into trouble like she did last time. The girl laughed. Sidney said that she would cure her. Syrinx corrected her by saying that it was not free. 
Sydney said that her sister has a lot of money. Sidna is a knight with steel buttocks in the rickshaw patrol. One day, when Syrinx was leaving, she was met with a stab wound. The girl knight offered her a drink next time. Syrinx asked if she was trying to empty her wine supply again. The knight said that she had a request, and Syrinx asked which one. Sidna said it wasn't big. She asked if Syrinx could keep Paz with her for a while. Sidna felt something when she was with him for a long time. His talent. The girl said that she was talking about it and pointed to the sword. Unfortunately, his training as an assassin was encouraged. But even if this is so, he wants to retrain him. Syrinx suggested asking Paz if he would mind. Sidney said that in that case, she would ask herself. Syrinx was shocked that she was doing this right now. The girl said that the baby probably already heard, and she asked if he wanted to stay here a little longer. The guy asked about the angel, and Sidna said that she was Syrinx. The boy called her Mrs. Syrinx, and Sidna said that she was an older sister. Syrinx leaned down next to the boy and told Paz that he could choose for himself. Sidna told him to think carefully. Sidna said all their guards were nice to him, but this house is not suitable for living. The healer did not understand what was wrong with her house. The girl said that it was all because she was spending time with her lover. Syrinx said that he was not her boyfriend. The knight said that if so, then the roommate. Syrinx was furious and repeated again that no. Paz asked what about his older brother. Syrinx asked Heimdall what he did with the child, because she doesn't understand why he called him big brother faster than he called her big sister. The guy said he quickly gets close to children. Sidna said that her sister lost to her brother. Syrinx said that this was enough. The guy said that he wanted to go with her. Wants to go with the knight. The girl called it adorable and told Syrinx that her boyfriend knows what to say to the child. She wondered where the healer had picked up this beautiful lover and thought that the money ghost of the second district would want him for herself. The boy said that if you study hard, it will help the big sisters. The girl covered the knight's mouth. Searing sat down next to the guy and said that he didn't need to help even more because he had already done a lot, to the point where it would serve her future plans well. But if he still wants to help her, then he just needs to become a good person. The boy said that he would definitely become an excellent knight. This is wonderful. Paz will prevent her from learning sword skills from Sidna. Searing said that if he wants to eat something, he can talk at any time. And if he wants, he can come back and just not forget. She wished to be careful in the third district, and she thought that the pseudo-religious cult she was talking about was going there. Sidna told the healer to have fun with her lover in moderation, and sees that she barely slept last night. Syrinx was very angry, but she couldn't say that in front of him. The girl approached Heimdall and asked what he said to Paz. She didn't understand what he could say to the guy, that he followed Sidna with burning eyes. It must not be a lie that the child had become attached to him so quickly. But he looks like someone who would burst into tears when children laugh at him. The girl told him not to waste time, but to just say it. The guy told the healer that he just wanted to be alone with her. But the healer said that this was a lie and asked if there was anything else. She thought that was all. The guy said there was something else, but he promised Paz not to tell Syrinx that. The girl was shocked that this was all, so she thought it was impudence. The guy said it was dangerous, and Heimdall doesn't know when Isla will decide to take revenge. The ceiling is dangerous, the floor is dangerous, the air is dangerous. Heimdall said that he is the only one who can protect Syrinx. It's been two days since Heimdall stayed at her house. An unplanned partner appeared in the healer's life, and everything changed. First, cleaning. Syrinx no longer handles household chores and jewelry, with the help of stones received from a dark sorcerer. The girl could use this simple magic over and over again. Working with inventory is a small luxury. Heimdall met the girl and asked if the night was calm. Secondly, cooking. Magic is not capable of everything. You need to take into account your skills. The only thing that needs to be done manually and without magic is cooking. Syrinx did not understand where he got such an apron from, because there was no such thing at home. And she added that it was for men, and she definitely wouldn't take one for herself. Heimdall was shocked by that. Searing said that if he was lying, she would kick her out. The guy said he borrowed it from the owner of a nearby bar. The healer told him to get closer to him. People in this area cannot live without any kind of meanness. Searing said that she might even ask for a hundred gold pieces for this apron. The girl did not understand what was on his mind. Heimdall was shocked, and the girl said that everything was written on his forehead. She asked if he really intended to count on his fingers. And this comes from the man who was so smart and quick when he helped with her paperwork. Andrew isn't bad, though. But it's still better not to take it from just anyone. 
she wouldn't have the courage to do it. Syrinx asked if he was going to cook. There are no spices at home, but Heimdall said there are some, and he found them when he was cleaning up. Syrinx was surprised that they were here. He also added that when he was cleaning the house, he noticed that she was good at her job, but did not seem interested in her personal life. Syrinx asked if he was talking about the absence of life, but Heimdall said that wasn't what he wanted to say. She said that she was like this, the dust should not be visible anywhere except the workbench, and she needs to eat well so as not to die. Heimdall told her to make sure she was eating properly. Syrinx asked if he was busy with something day and night, saying that she is not interested in her personal life, and besides, she doesn't do housework, and from this we can draw a different conclusion. Heimdall decided to give her an example. She wants to leave soon, at any moment without regrets. Syrinx asked what he was going to do. The guy said he would make meringue cookies. The girl said that he did not need to work, and she would eat everything anyway. If only this little cookie could stop her for just a second. There aren't hundreds, and she would have done them thousands of times. Heimdall said he was simply talking about the timing of cooking and the benefits of it, and he was sorry that they didn't have much time. Syrinx said she would support him. If it's worth her time, there's no reason not to try. The girl asked if he had finished yet, and asked how much he had done. Heimdall said with a smile that he even did a little for the guests. It seemed to the healer that he really enjoyed cooking, and Heimdall himself confirmed this. It was very bright. Syrinx said it doesn't matter how good the food is, and she asked if he was too careless. He asked her not to laugh. The lady apologized and said that she was simply weak in front of cute things. The girl saw the egg white. It wasn't cream, but it smelled sweet. She decided to try it. But Heimdall quickly stopped her and said that she couldn't eat it. Syrinx didn't understand why, because it smelled delicious. The guy took her hand and rubbed it on himself. Syrinx was grateful that she had wiped, but she had done it in an unusual place. And then, in that very place, his apron tore and his torso was exposed. The guy began to get very embarrassed. It was just wow for the healers. This man's chest was even flushed with embarrassment. Syrinx hardly cooked during her difficult childhood. Unexpectedly, it was worth noting that it was cooked perfectly. A guy came and asked Syrinx what she was saying. The girl was angry because she didn't understand why he didn't knock. Heimdall said that he knocked and he wondered what she was thinking about that she didn't even hear him. The guy asked what was in the box. It was from a neighbor. Andrew said he would help when she returned, so Syrinx was lucky. The guy was shocked that the girl also liked sweets. Syrinx said that it's not that much, but in the future she may well become addicted, because it's delicious. She didn't know if she had become dependent on it. The girl remembered that she wanted to ask if she could go to his room for a while. He didn't understand. Why is the healer asking this? Because this is the home of Syrinx. The girl said that this was his room after all. And naturally, she must first obtain permission. She gave away the room she used as a storage room. In any case, Syrinx apologizes and said she would be just a minute. Heimdall asked if there was anything else she liked. And he wasn't talking about sweets. The girl didn't understand why he was suddenly asking, and didn't understand what the hell. In this case, Heimdall will ask her to write down something else on her list of things she likes. Syrinx did not understand what exactly. The man said with a smile that we should write it down. Syrinx told him to go and lay out the laundry. Later, Syrinx did not understand where she could have put something. She searched everywhere, and suddenly found the notebook that she gave to Heimdall. On the notepad, it says to mind your own business. Syrinx did not understand what it was. It also said that you need to lay out your clothes well. She realized that this was Hemadal's correspondence with himself. On one of the pages, it was written that there is no need to contact the demon so much. Syrinx did not understand what a demon was. Supposedly, this was written this afternoon. It also said that the food should not be eaten because it was poisoned. Syrinx thought it was cute and Heimdall appeared behind her. The guy asked what was there. Syrinx abruptly closed her notebook. Heimdall asked why she laughed at this. The guy asked again why she laughed at this. He was very angry. The healer apologized for taking without permission, and she apologized for laughing, justifying it by saying that it was very funny. The guy hoped that the girl was smiling so beautifully, not because of thoughts about that idiot. He put his hand on the girl's shoulder and leaned over. Just the thought that he saw her facial expression, which is inaccessible to him, makes Heimdall madly angry. And as she knows, the guy is a good watchdog for her home. Syrinx was afraid that the girl was in danger, 
she does not meet with her colleagues or subordinates. Heimdall told the healer not to let other dogs even look at her and asked if she understood him. Since the guy works well and tries so hard to please the girl, but he doesn't understand why she doesn't understand the sincerity of his feelings for her, Syrinx asked if he would stop a little already. The guy agreed and said that he would show how sincere he was. Heimdall said that the idiot's shirt was torn, and that's why he asked if he should do the same. He asked what to do, whether to tear it or not. Syrinx thought that she was going to tear it. Heimdall said that what she did to him during the day she should do now. Third district. Alchemy Street. The girl had not been there for a long time. It was always gloomy there. She was born and raised in dark alleys, but she still hasn't gotten used to it. If only it weren't for the owner's instructions. A girl ran out to her screaming for help. She said that someone was chasing her. But when she looked, she saw that there was no one. The girl told the stranger that everything was fine, and fortunately no one followed her. She believed that the girl was simply mistaken in such darkness. And if she goes in this direction, she can go to the main road. The girl was grateful, and the woman thought about going to Syrinx. The girl told herself that everything was fine and she was almost there. She had just a little time left. Just go out onto the main road and then she will be safe. The woman heard a rustling behind her. Turning back, she didn't understand whether she imagined it or not, but she saw only a shoe and blood on the road. Lintella told Syrinx that she kept her promise and that it was a good job. The girl said that it was natural because they themselves agreed. After the incident that day, news of the sale of counterfeit jewelry at an auction in the first region reached the imperial family and caused a great stir. A large number of aristocrats who bought fake jewelry are influential people. Of course, this case is not so easy to let go. It was an easy target for those targeting the auction house. It seemed to the main character that Lintella was in a good mood. To such an extent that burn marks are revealed that are only visible to trusted persons, this is the first time this has happened since Syrinx saved her life. Lintella said that this was right, and since they agreed, then she must keep her promise. But she saw countless people, who fell into the abyss, unable to do the simplest things. That's why Lintella loves money. With it, there is only one result. The woman asked Syrinx if she was interested in the situation that was happening now. Lady Canaria went to the auction house. Canaria is the prince's second wife. Come to think of it, she heard about it at the auction. She was an imperial bird and spoke to Isla. Lintella added that Syrinx saw there, it looks like she covets this auction house. She wanted to take over the auction house. After all, the second prince is behind him. The second prince is an ambitious and greedy man. Lintella heard that he also had his eye on the auction house. She believed that the crown prince was also interested. It was not clear whether this meant that the conflict between the crown prince had escalated. The emperor of the country has two sons, crown and second prince. Among them, the crown prince is the main male character in the first and second parts of the novel. But the heroine didn't really like this hero when she read the book. Because he is a flighty person. He falls in love with the main character of the second part and becomes obsessed. The same garbage as Sire. The knights of both princes are now unpleasant throughout the city. The temple knights are also looking for heretics. Syrinx said Lintella worked hard. Dark Alley is close to an autonomous region that is not under the rule of the imperial family. Most lords have connections with influential people from there. The relationship between District 5 and the temple is shown in the novel. And while watching the auction house, Syrinx saw dirty dealings between Isla and the temple tied to money. This was one of the main reasons to completely overthrow Isla. In addition, her adoptive father and sire belonged to the temple. Syrinx said she was on Lintella's side and the woman laughed and said that was very encouraging. The girl said Lintella was so happy. It also comes from the fact that a small businessman is on her side. Lintella for daring to offer her a deal for destroying the auction house. If she's a merchant who managed to get out alive and she still doesn't know what she's really hiding, Syrinx is always happy to cooperate. Lintella said that no matter what she hides, she will not pry it out. And by the way, Lintella doesn't see her jewelry. Syrinx realized that she was talking about Heimdall. This gem is at the door. Lintella called it a true gem. Lintella asked Syrinx to tell her impressions. The girl said it was easy, but precious stones. It was a business trip. The healer didn't know if there was something Lintella couldn't do. The woman was very pleasantly surprised that she thought so. Due to the current situation, she can no longer receive deliveries. 
Lintella said that she herself should go to the third district. Sidna told her to be careful when she went to the third district, because it seems like that pseudo-religious group she was talking about is heading there. Syrinx agreed and told her to send her the diary and the necessary information. And this is a trivial matter. Lintella's request is not very dangerous. In addition, the price is high, so there is no reason to refuse. Lintella thought this was great and said she would send someone to her within a few days. Syrinx had a lot of clients today. Several days have passed since she was at Lintella's. After the auction house closed, she had an increase in the number of clients wanting to get rid of jewelry. This is, of course, a lot of money. It won't last long, because the auction house was one of the pillars supporting the first district. It may be slower than before, because two princes are embroiled in a bitter battle of interests. Even if the auction house is destroyed to pieces, it will definitely be reopened. And Syrinx must be ready for this. We need to plan a meeting with Isla. Heimdall was his dog on a leash, and he is here now. Isla will come for him soon. If you think about it, Heimdall has been here for a long time. A little over four days have passed. He never left the house. If you ask this during the day, he will say that he has nowhere else to go. And if at night, he will say that he is protecting her from unforeseen danger. Therefore, Syrinx does not even have a hint of Heimdall's colleagues. The guy came up and asked her if she was okay. Syrinx said she was a little tired. The bell that rings is a special bell for special clients of Syrinx. The girl said that she really had a guest, a little special. The healer told him not to worry because few people could use this call. Finally, the servant arrived. The man handed over the envelope, and Heimdall asked who the man was. It was a warlock from the third district. Syrinx had been waiting for this news for a very long time. This was a hint for Eve. Eve. The name comes from the name of the goddess, a fantastic stone that can make wishes come true, artfully crafted through witchcraft and alchemy, capable of breaking any curse or curing any disease. But there is something that people don't know about him. To show the stone's abilities in full force and use all its capabilities, you need a strong jeweler. The one Syrinx treated last was a fairly capable warlock from the third district. Syrinx asked him for information about Eva. Syrinx was shocked that she wanted to meet, Lintella said to go to the 3rd District, and Sidna said to be careful if she went to the 3rd District. And the letter said to go to the 3rd District. The healer hoped that this ominous atmosphere was just an illusion. Soon Syrinx will need to go to the 3rd Region. She reported this to Heimdall. Someone knocked again, and the guy said he would answer. When Heimdall opened the doors, he saw a girl in front of him. She got scared and pointed the knife at him. Syrinx recognized this voice. Syrinx called Bonita. The girl let go of the guy and ran inside. She was very glad that Mrs. Syrinx existed. Benita said she was very scared. She was the chief mate of a noble lord. The main character asked Benita what brought her here. The girl said that she already thought that she had come to the wrong place. She couldn't even believe that a man was coming out of Mrs. Syrinx's house, and it wasn't a guest. Syrinx said she shouldn't have brandished the knife anyway. It's good that it's daytime, because if it were night, she would have a hard time with Heimdall. Bonita asked if he was the guy for the mistress, and noticed that he was suitable for her. The healer did not understand why almost everyone who comes thinks that they are a couple. The maid said that Mrs. Syrinx does not like servants, so he is not a servant and it is not like he is a patient. Then there is only one thing left. Syrinx didn't understand why her options didn't include just a guest. Bonita said that guests do not hold dishes or wipe down the table in Miss Syrinx's house. The girl was angry and asked Heimdall if he cleaned up while she was working, because she thought he was just relaxing. The healer said that she had already spoken and asked him if he thought that she couldn't clean herself. Heimdall said he was good at cleaning, in everything related to cleaning, cooking, and washing dishes. Bonita said that they were not a couple, but spouses. Syrinx asked to be allowed to introduce. She called Heimdall her roommate and said that he had been living in her house for some time. It's her assistant or something like that. The maid said that her mother used to say that strangers become lovers. The healer didn't even want to listen to Benita. The girl herself realized that this was enough and suggested getting back to business. The maid brought a letter. Syrinx understood why the girl paused and said that Benita could talk in front of him, and everything was fine. Her mistress sent an invitation again for Syrinx. Mrs. Benita is one of the few duchesses of the empire, the only daughter of the Duke of Chaban. Her healer knew how she became so worthless— this was the third patient she saved. Plus, she's the crown prince's cousin. The crown prince has connections with her adoptive father and with the sire, 
so the girl herself would never have decided to contact her mistress. Syrinx said that she herself knew the answer well. The girl was grateful for the invitation, but unfortunately she would refuse. The main character did not specifically decide to contact Heimdall, and he is the last of all with whom she is going to deal, and she told her to tell her that she couldn't leave the store. This was already the fifth refusal. She will definitely be angry that Syrinx refused this. Syrinx decided to write an invitation instead, because the lady will be disappointed again. The maid said that she would not do anything and could give it to the lady. The healer said that since she had already arrived, they could eat. And then Syrinx noticed that Heimdall was wearing an apron. She angrily asked where he even got it from. The guy asked to be allowed to do it because he could handle it. Benita asked if they were a couple. Syrinx tried to remove his apron. The maid heard that only couples share the apron. In the end, Heimdall won back the apron and cooked just the perfect meal. That night, they called Andrew and had a get-together with drinks. Andrew said that she suddenly had a friend with good cooking skills and asked if she was going to get married. Syrinx asked if she wanted her to kick him out, or he will sit down silently. Andrew was sad because she still beat him. Bonita noticed that they were at it again. Bonita asked if she said that she was going to the third district and said that then she would help and report from the third district. Syrinx said she would be pleased if she told her anything. The healer thought that Lintella could give her the card. But it won't be as good as the real memories of the third district. It was already very late. Benita stayed at her house for the night. She seemed surprised when she saw Heimdall's changes, but only for a while. There are a lot of strange and crazy people in this alley. A few days later, Lintella's envoy came with a request. He said the debtor had disappeared. That was already a problem. Lintella's request was that Syrinx find her debtor, and she took from him the precious stone with which he was going to repay the debt. However, this man disappeared. Syrinx said that it turns out that he did not run away. The envoy confirmed this. He said that the neighbor said that he walked very calmly, as if on an easy walk, but he told them something very strange. They asked him where he was going, and that debtor said that he was going to heaven. That's exactly what he said. Syrinx assumed that he was sick with something and decided that he was about to die. But the man denied, because borrowers like him always sign a contract prohibiting suicide. Lintella so easily, she would not allow her debtor to take his own life so easily. This means that he could not commit suicide. But if he is still dead, so Miss Lintella said her assignment could be put on hold for now. Since they themselves will bring the stone, a little later she will contact the princess. A large borrower has disappeared without a trace. If the emperor and the temple interfere in this matter, it will be difficult for her. Syrinx could only wait for news from Lintella. But two days later, more ridiculous news arrived. Syrinx was shocked and asked if Benita really hadn't returned yet, because it had already been five days. The man said she was talking about the week's line and said Benita never broke her promises. His lady thinks Benita is in trouble, and most likely disappeared. Syrinx thought about it, and the guy asked if she knew anything about it. Syrinx asked if he minded if she told everything a little later, because she was not yet sure of her guesses. The man asked if she needed help, but Syrinx said no, but he could give the lady her message and she would find Benita. The man understood her and said that in that case, he would go. Bonita once greatly helped Lady Cheban, who was in trouble and became her personal maid. Bonita always strived for a calm and stable life. She has no reason to run away. And it turns out that she really was kidnapped. Heimdall came up from behind and said that it looked like she was having a hard time. The healer said that she had already told him not to sneak up on her like that, and she said that she would fire him. The guy said that she would be sad without him and added that he heard everything. He asked if the same maid was missing. She didn't mention out loud that she was a maid, and she didn't understand how he knew. Heimdall said that he could see that she was surprised that he knew about her work. Heard this at that drinking party. Benita said that she sewed up that skirt, and her mistress was such a beauty, and added that she was the servant of a very beautiful woman. Heimdall wanted to strangle her because she was noisy. She chatted incessantly. Syrinx told her not to drink too much, but she drank all the alcohol so much that they had to drag her to Andrew's store. But she didn't say who exactly she was serving. It looks like she and Mrs. are friends and keep each other's secrets. Everything comes together, and now she worries even more. He asked the girl if she was leaving. Syrinx said that he had already heard everything, and she needs to go to the third district. 
and by the way, she asked if he would go with her. Heimdall asked her how he could leave her. Syrinx did not understand when he managed to change his clothes. The guy added that he was her assistant, and he must fulfill his duties. And he asked if she minded. Syrinx thought about it. She didn't understand what he was talking about. But then I remembered that she called him that during the day. Syrinx did not believe that his day and night selves had access to each other's memories. The guy said not to look at him like that, because he told him everything during the day. Syrinx asked again. She was interested in what he said. The guy started talking about the notebook and asked if she noticed it. Heimdall has been telling himself a lot lately, and he ordered her not to bother her and to perform her role as an assistant well. It just seems that he sees their relationship somehow differently. He didn't understand why someone who didn't care about everything around him constantly talked about her, and he doesn't like them spending time together. Heimdall asked her to stay with him. Syrinx told him to calm down. The girl didn't understand how much longer she had to repeat that she allowed him to stay in her house only to repay his help. But if he continues to behave this way, then she will only communicate with the daytime. But the guy said that was enough and covered her mouth. Heimdall said that if she spoke about the day again, he would break his hands because with these hands he touched her. He asked if everything was clear. Syrinx decided that as soon as she was done with Isla, she would need to get rid of these two. Heimdall was surprised that they wouldn't go straight to the third district. The healer said they would need a letter. She set it on fire, and he noticed that writing appeared there and assumed that it was a code. But the girl said that it was just a magical text. These letters are used by dark magicians. They set off. They appeared in the laboratory of some mad magician. But Syrinx said not to worry because this is the house of her friend. Heimdall asked if it was fashionable to step on things on the floor. Syrinx said it was probably possible. She was surprised that he acquired the skin. First, they needed to look for the owner. A woman walked into the room and was shocked by what she saw in front of her. Syrinx was glad to see the magician. The magician asked why many times. She asked if she would go and talked about her boyfriend. But the girl said that this was not her boyfriend. It was difficult to guess age from appearance. Extreme degree of mistrust. Talks incessantly and is afraid of open space. The main character told Mrs. Titus that this man was not dangerous, but the magician said that he was dangerous. She said that people are all dangerous because they destroy the environment. They are evil and bring destruction to the world. Syrinx asked if this is what all dark magicians want. The magician said that they were a bunch of madmen who wanted to lead the world to destruction. Syrinx noticed that her judgment was too objective. She is more radical than other sorcerers. This is Syrinx's fifth patient named Titus, even though she was expelled from the Warlock clan. Because of her incredible abilities, she was able to become famous throughout the Third District. That's why Titus doesn't trust people. Syrinx wanted to talk normally, but Titus said that it was impossible to open it and asked first to tell who it was. Syrinx said that this is not her lover. The truth is that only she thinks so. Heimdall called Syrinx and said that it was time to reveal their relationship. The girl told him to stop and not say anything. The guy called her his mistress. Syrinx told him to close his mouth already. Heimdall asked the lady not to be embarrassed by him. The magician said that he was very noisy, and the cat was just calmly licking his paws. Syrinx told Mrs. Titus that this was her home pearl. Titus did not understand what she was saying because this is a person. Syrinx said that Ruthie looks like a cute cat on her shoulder too, but in reality, it is a servant animal. Syrinx said that for her this is not a person but a tame gem, a pebble that even Mrs. Lintella wants for herself. Titus became interested when she heard the name Mrs. Lintella. She went out and opened the doors. The magician said that this man should wear a bracelet. Syrinx said that this was certainly not a problem. Heimdall examined the bracelet, but Syrinx said that it was not necessary because it was dangerous when the bracelet shook. The bracelet is designed in such a way that at the slightest irritation, the thin glass with the core inside breaks. This poison is enough to kill one elephant. Even a small amount is enough to dissolve your hands and completely poison your body. Therefore, Heimdall must be careful not to try to remove it. Titus is truly the greatest sorceress. Heimdall asked Syrinx in a whisper if they were enemies, but the girl told her to take off her eyes because they don't look like enemies. The guy said that no one knows how life will turn out, and relationships between people are like that. The guy asked to tell him if there was a need to make a fuss, because in this case, he will take off the bracelet, 
Searing said he would get hurt, but Heimdall said that in this case she would cure him, and if he loses his hand, then she will be choked with guilt, and he hopes that this way she will like him more. Titus called them into the room. Searing noticed that she still had the same mess. She didn't understand why Heimdall didn't sit down. The guy just stood there. He didn't understand how the gem could sit down. Syrinx realized that this was sarcasm. The magician said that the gem would not be able to pass the experiment. Syrinx didn't understand what she meant at first. The woman noticed that it is difficult to find strong adult men. It is known that sorcerers use a lot of money to hire people and conduct dangerous experiments on the human body. However, Titus is against such experiments. She said that they would not conduct tests that endanger human life. This position was held by the magicians who followed Titus. Syrinx asked if she had made any announcements. Titus said no, and she is under strict supervision. Syrinx said if she knows who is watching. This was the Imperial family. Their knights walk around as if sniffing out something. And the Temple Knights too, it seems, their coercive measures are becoming increasingly harsh. She didn't know what to do. Syrinx said that it seems that Titus and her minions are having a hard time. This is too much. Titus said everything was fine, and she added that she doesn't often leave the house. And now I wanted to talk about information. Syrinx was sure that there had just been a damp wind. Syrinx turned to Heimdall and said that this was soundproofing magic. Titus said that in such a situation there is no need for a stone with ears. The girl agreed and asked the magician if she had found Eve. She said that not really. She didn't find it, and as the letter said, she didn't have it. Even if the clue is real, it is still unclear. That's not bad either. The perceived value is in the hands of a newly created religious sect. Goddess Asena, she was a symbol of healing and life that disappeared in ancient times. A newly created religion that worships her. Blessing of Asena. The altar of discipline can be called the goddess of healing in this world, only Minerva. The blessing of Asena for them is nothing more than heresy, starting as a small charity. They grew throughout the third, fourth, and fifth districts. They also hold meetings that are open to everyone and private ones, where only exceptional believers have permission to enter. Syrinx was a little unclear. Syrinx asked if her sister would leave everything like this. After all, the fourth district is under the control of the Dark Knight. In that area, they were completely destroyed. They got rid of everyone who resisted. Syrinx now understands how it is. Since then, they have been operating in the third and fifth districts. After all, the lord of the third district doesn't care about this— in any case, they have worship services and meetings twice a week. There, they distribute food and gather church believers, and so, before nightfall, they gather people. And after midnight, they take them to an unknown place. Syrinx assumed it was human trafficking, and when they return in the morning, the number of people returning back is less than the original one. Those who have been there say that they have visited paradise. When poor people disappear, no one pays attention to it. But if an ordinary person disappears, the lord of the area or the rickshaw's patrolman will notice. No one would do something stupid like that without a reason. Syrinx asked if it could be that someone is kidnapping and trafficking people. The magician didn't understand why she needed this. Syrinx said that her friend had disappeared. And she's from the third district. However, this situation makes her suspicious. The main character thought about whether it was possible that after she and Benita separated, she returned to the third district and from there she was kidnapped. Mistress Sidna also said something similar. It seems that all those who disappear are somehow connected with the newborn religion. Just like Lintella's missing debtor, the magician said that she did not know anything like this. Ruth didn't see it. As expected, she has no choice but to check everything herself. According to the magician, meetings are held two times a week. But when exactly? She said that the meeting would be today and asked Syrinx if she would go, the healer said that she had been waiting for clues about Eva for a very long time. No matter how dangerous it is, Syrinx must go there. In this case, the magician will tell you how to hide in the third district and asked her to be careful. The magician said that the information she found about Eva may be unreliable, so Syrinx should be careful. Syrinx just laughed, because she knows the abilities of a healer. The magician asked if she was talking about the power of Aiden. She is the only one who knows about the main character's secret. Titus said she saved her life and she won't tell anyone about it. That day, Titus promised to keep her secret forever and took an oath of silence forever. Searing said that if the meeting is today, then she should hit the road now. The girl called Heimdall. 
Ruthie began to pet the girl, and Syrinx said that the cat was still as charming. Heimdall grabbed the girl, and she did not understand what he was doing. The guy asked her to stroke him, too, and sarcastically stuck out his tongue. Syrinx was shocked. Heimdall asked why pet cats when such a beautiful and precious one was in front of her, but Syrinx hit him. The healer told Titus that they were already leaving. The magician ran up to Syrinx and told her to contact her if she needed help. The girl said that she would do so. Ruthie started meowing. Titus asked what she sees at a religious organization meeting. There, Rukti saw Isla. They found the place. And the guy asked her if she would tell him the details today. He said that as an assistant, he could know the reasons. Syrinx said she came to find out what they were doing here. The girl invited Hans to toss a coin. The guy asked Sis if she really wanted it. She was not happy, because he needed to call her Dana, as she had said before, and he again did his thing. There were a lot of people then. A man approached them and said that this was probably their first time here. The girl hid behind the guy and asked who he was. The man said that they shouldn't be so afraid, because they are messengers of God, and they are the ones who carry the word of God. The guy asked if they came from the altar of discipline, but they denied it. Syrinx realized that they had definitely found them. The man said that they were servants who follow the goddess Asina, who created all living things and gave them life. Their name is Blessing of Asina. The girl asked again. She said that this was the first time she had heard this. These pseudo-religious people cover themselves by wearing similar robes. This makes them look even more suspicious. 